So God bless you. Uh, but anyways, we're getting ready for this uh, great time in the Lord tonight. So go ahead and share this broadcast. I'm going to give you about 10 seconds to do so. And we're getting ready to bring the man and the woman of God up um, tonight. And we're getting ready to dive into some incredible, massive word uh, that you all need to receive. So if you haven't done so yet, go ahead and share it. Uh, shout out to D.L. Wells Ministries. I see you in here, Mother Rosetta. God bless you. Amen. If you comment, I can see you. If you don't comment, I might not know you're in here. But let me know. Come on, get in the comment section and let us know you're in uh, with us tonight. Come on, get in here. Amen. I see we're over 20. I want to get us over 30 tonight, so I know we'll get there. Amen. All right, so God bless you. Let's go ahead and let's bring the man and woman of God up tonight. We, they were here on Sunday. They double teamed our service, both day and night service, with Apostle preaching in the morning time and Pastor Wells preaching in the evening time. It was such a blessing to be in the house of God. If you were there, let us know I was there. Come on, put it in the comment section. And let us know that you were there. And we're getting ready. Uh, to receive them in the house tonight, in the Bible study, the most dynamic Bible study of this uh, internet world. You do not want to miss this. So go ahead. We're getting ready to bring them up. Amen. God bless you. Uh, our brother Ty, I see you, Sister Sabrina. God bless you. Amen. Oh, she said, we're in for a fight tonight. You better believe it. We're getting ready to defeat some things tonight and, con and conquer in victory. All right, y'all. If you're ready, come on. Let's get our hands together and let's get our uh, 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 honor where honor is due. Let's give our flowers where the people are here. Come on, everybody. Let's get in here and let's welcome our overseers, Apostle and Pastor Wells on tonight. Come on, everybody. Let's get in here and welcome them. Apostle and Pastor Rashonda Wells. Welcome to the Bible study here at the altar. Welcome. Yes. Thank it's you. good to have y'all tonight. Uh, how you guys feeling? Fantastic. Yes? Great. Good, good. You, you all had done an awesome job on Sunday, uh, double teaming and tag teaming and, uh, and knocking and slanging the word all over the place on Sunday. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we are so pleased to have you all uh, in here tonight. Um, and just kind of giving a, a brief overview, you all preached uh, uh, messages on Sunday that extended um, into our series, um, Fight for uh, fight for your life. And I just want to kind of um, share some of that a little bit tonight. Um, on Sunday morning, Apostle preached a word that says, I'm not finished. Put me uh, back in. Put me back in. And that theme, and I don't want to get into too much of it because I want the man of God to express more of what the Lord is giving him on that message. But in that message, uh, the man of God was giving us perspective as it would be in a, a ball game uh, when someone is getting ready to get in or the coach is getting ready to take them out, rather, uh, they were uh, not ready to come out of the game. And so the uh, man of God was showing us that uh, we're not finished with this fight, but it's time to put us back in. And Pastor Wells ministered to us on uh, Sunday evening, uh, pay attention, where she walked us through Genesis and showing us the details of what was uh, forgotten, what was given to us, but what was uh, neglected. And so we need to pay attention to stay in this fight. And we had a lot of revelation in these words um, on Sunday. So you're, you're in the right place at the right time to receive a word from the Lord. And so with that being said, I want to kind of yield this now to the pastors and uh, wherever you guys would love for us to go. And I'm going to keep track of all of the comments and all of uh, the um, questions that's going to come forth tonight. And we'll get to them as they come. So guys, do not be sh uh, shy to share on tonight. But please begin to uh, share this with your broadcast and uh, lend questions and comments so we can uh, interact with you tonight. So with that being said, Apostle, we want to kind of start with, with where you want us to go on tonight. So with that word, I'm not finished. Put me back in. Give us some more revelation on that, if you will, man of God. Well, again, as we, uh, we give out to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who's author and finish of our faith. Yes. We thank God for you and your wife. Uh, Pastor Corey and Pastor Sierra. They're doing such Amen. great work Amen. Uh, in Tampa, Florida, uh, 2806 North 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida. Listen, if you're not going anywhere, you need to hook up and connect yes. with Altar Worship Center. You need to meet us at the altar. Amen. God bless you, Again, man of God. Thank God for my wife, lovely wife. Didn't she preach on Sunday She night? did. I yes, she did. Pay attention. Pay attention. And so we've been just working with you all, uh, uh, coordinating our efforts to uh, talk about this fight thing because we know that everybody uh, has been going through some trials and tribulations. They're fighting in different areas and segments of their lives. And we just want them to understand that some of that fight that they're fighting, amen, does not belong to them. Right. It belongs to the Lord. Right, you know? right. And so um, 
I tell you, that word that God gave me, you know, uh, to give to God's people and to myself, it, it just, it changes your life. It turns your life around, you know. I don't have to fight as much as I thought yes. I had to fight. Yes, sir. Yes, you sir. Know? So that's basically, basically what it is, is uh, knowing that uh, Paul said, I fought a good fight. Mm -hmm. I finished my course, you know. Yes, sir. And that does not necessarily mean that it was a, a, a horrendous fight. It doesn't mean it was an all day, all night, 20 years fight, you know. It just means that uh, there are things that I was I went through, some, some, some trials, some tribulations, and I finished my course. Yeah. I've, 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 I've done what I needed to do. Heaven is my goal. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's awesome. And, and, and Apostle, just kind of give us a little bit more perspective on that, some of the fights that we fight that we don't need to fight. If you could give us a little bit more perspective on that. Well, you know, Paul said in the scriptures, amen, uh, I believe it's Ephesians, the sixth chapter, mm -hmm. and he says, finally, my brother, uh, be strong in the Lord. You know, he tells us to put on the whole arm of God that we might be able to stand against the schemes, yes. the schemes yes. of the devil. Note, note this, that whatever we're going through, we are being uh, attacked, addressed by an enemy who does not love us, does not care for us, uh, who, who loves to see the children of God put down, cast it down. And so the Bible says, hey, guess what? You don't have to, you know, get so caught up into the fight. Right. I, I've given you some things. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand. So, so that you're going to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil when you start right. equipping yourself and putting on what needs to be put on, because the enemy, Amen, was made, Amen, into the heavenlies, heaven. So, Amen. If 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 God made the enemy, the devil, Amen. Surely He knows what it takes to put him down. Yes, sir. And so we put on this whole arm of God, amen, so we can fight against his, his schemes. Um, and we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yes. So most of us think that our fights are with our family, our cousins, our, you know, people on the job. But most of our fights, 95% of your fight is with spiritual things. Uh, thing, the Bible says yes. things in high places. Yes. Rulers of darkness. Yes, sir. Principalities. You know, if you can understand that. Your fight, amen, or your trials and tribulations would be just a little easier for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think a lot of people misunderstand their fight altogether, and that's how they end up in terrible situations because they, and we started off this series with that, uh, understanding the truth about what you're fighting and what you're fighting in. And I think a lot of people uh, misinterpret what their fight really is, and then that's how you end up fighting uh, unnecessary fights or you right. end up warring unnecessary wars and different things like that. And I, I know some of the people in the comments tonight can probably attest to those uh, uh, excruciating, painful experiences of fighting fights that we had no business in. Exactly. Um, Apostle, if you want to kind of give, a, give us a little bit more um, into that, the dangers of, of these type of fights. Well, I, I want to say this. You know, Adam and Eve, if you know the story, my wife took us back there. It was powerful, I right. tell you. But when, I, when you pay attention to and read the story of Adam and Eve, that was all spiritual. Right, you know? right. They were made flesh. You know, he gave them dominion and, and they, they were able to deal with an earthly, you know, uh, being or thing or, or substance. Or, but, but here Eve is addressed by a spiritual, mm -hmm. something spiritually or something spiritual happened. Yes, sir. And so we are all introduced or attacked. Job, again, was introduced. It was spiritual. You understand? Yes, sir. You know, he said, have you considered my servant, Job? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, and I tell people, we've heard the story of Job for so long that sometimes God puts us in positions, amen, where he wants to bring us into a position of humbleness. You yeah. know, and you can, he said, he said, Job was a perfect and upright man. Yes. You know, and so uh, should, should our uh, perfectness be brought down some so that we can get into the reality of who we are in mm -hmm. God or mm -hmm. with God, you know? And so we, we, we're fighting these spiritual things, these things in darkness. And, and so you have to be able to understand that the, without the Bible says uh, that if you don't have the knowledge, we perish for the lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. How are you going to fight something that you have no knowledge Right, of? right. You know, this, the Bible says, study the show thyself approved. Yes. And work with that. You've you got to study God's word. The Bible said the, the word of God is quick and powerful. Yes. you got to get uh, that sword. He mm -hmm. said, put on, the, put on the helmet of salvation. Amen. Prepare your feet for the preparation of the gospel. Yes. Put on the sword. you gotta put, you got to put all these things on so that you will be able to fight this enemy. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I want to tell you, Pastor Corey. Yes, sir. I know this for a fact. 
he can be brought down. He uh, absolutely, he can. absolutely. He, can. he Jesus told us he's given us power and authority. Yes. So absolutely, uh, it, the reason why I I, I want to kind of say to this too, uh, Apostle, one of the reasons why I believe that people. Uh, don't believe that he can be brought down is because they haven't built themselves up in that faith. And one of the things I know that you always say, uh, work out your soul salvation in the Lord. And I love it. You always remind us that we have to work these things out in him. That's right. Yes, sir. You got to do it. And there are cosmic uh, powers, Mm -hmm. uh, presence of darknesses. Uh, There's uh, spiritual forces constantly. Amen. We'll be constantly being attacked by, but if we have the knowledge of knowing that when it's introduced or when it comes about, we need to know what to do. Yes. Now, listen, sometimes, you know, and people have said this in the body of Christ, they said that there are uh, spiritual things as far as generational curses, mm-hmm. right? And, um, you know, we can throw that, you know, because we, we like to use something, right? right. You know, we got to find something to blame mm-hmm. this on. And we live in a world that people like to take something and blame it on, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And so... Can uh, I pause you right yeah, there? Yeah. That blame thing, that's a that's an issue that we're having. We're seeing it. We're actually, not to get political, but seeing it from the top level. Yes. And so it's, it's starting to become a natural thing for people to point their fingers instead of fighting the good fight, so to That's say. Right. Um, I, but that blame thing is, is huge right now. Um, and Sister Sharice just echoed the, uh, the whole armor out of 6 and 11, Ephesians 6 and 11. Mm-hmm. But that, that blame thing, you really just caught my mind on that because I, we're seeing a weaker people mm-hmm. because of blame um, and no, no uh, accountability mm-hmm. in, the, in the world today. Or even in the body of Christ, there's not a lot of accountability happening mm-hmm. uh, within us. And some, some people allow uh, you know they're weak yeah so blaming it makes them feel strong right you know right. giving it to someone else take this pile of stuff it's yours you did it yeah i want to tell you that the enemy is busy and mm-hmm. so some things we may have got from generational curses some things we may have picked up from hanging around a certain uh, 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 this, you know a certain diff- uh, you know different type of people right. environment you right. know you pick up stuff going places you're not supposed to be going absolutely you know connecting yourself with people you're not supposed to be connected absolutely so, so, so I said that was two right mm-hmm. and then you have that third one that one that you've done all by yourself mm. <laughs> stay stay you there know. sir don't move too fast <laughs> stay right there cuz i think you got a lot of people on here tonight i think you got their ears twitching right now on that one can can, can you wait a minute the one that we did all by ourselves i, I think we need i need we need some revelation on that sir come on so you we there's some things that we've done all by ourselves uh, some television shows that we are into horror. Yes. You know, a lot of people like horror movies. Yes, sir. You watch enough horror movies, you become horrible yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. Pastor Wells, what you got to say to that? <laughs> that thing hit me. You are talking, man of God. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, so man. A lot of things that we do that, that you know, uh, we have five senses, mm-hmm. our eyes, our nose, so on. Yeah. And these things take in things. Yes, sir. You know, eyes take in things. This is a, we are sponges. We take in stuff, and by, through the ears, through the nose, mm-hmm. through eyes. So we are some of the things that we are addressed with, us, or the way we are, is because our environment, right? You know, who right. we associate. You mm-hmm. get too much of anything. The yeah. Bible says that. Yes, you know, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. We have, everything we have to do what? In moderation. In moderation. Yes, moderation. yes so sir. So we take too, we do too much of anything. And we'll find ourselves caught up in a spirit yeah. that is overwhelming itself, taking 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 us by force, yeah. you know. Yeah. And now, let me say this now: uh, witchcraft, black magic. You got a lot of people that are dealing with a lot of dark things. Yeah. You know that people are using Ouija boards. Mm-hmm. You know uh, they're doing things. Even that's coming out more common in the movies too. Yes. Even more. And uh, you, then you have people that you hang around and they keep saying the, the light. You know. And, yeah. And the stars. Yeah. You know? All the universe. The universe you got those universe people. And, uh, what's it called? The the horoscope. Uh huh. Yep. All of that. The signs. Well, yeah. The more you get of anything, anything you get too much of. Uh, develop, watch this, it creates mm-hmm. a spirit. Mm-hmm. All right? That spirit is then uh, uh, notified to hell, hey, we're, we're working here. Come mm-hmm. on up here and help mm-hmm. us. You know, remember, we heard that scripture. The Bible says uh, that spirit comes out of a man. It, it, it wanders, you yeah. know, through the, the one uh, biblical, one uh, 
uh, interpretation says it, it wanders through waters. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, and and then it says when it's feel like it's not getting anywhere, it goes and gets seven more, more. demons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Seven plus one is, is eight. eight. Yeah. Now I just got over one. Mm-hmm. How, how in the world am I going? Now now let's take eight. Mm-mm. Let's take eight, and we ain't got finished. Well, we got finished with the one he brought back seven, but what about them other ones? Yeah, yeah. That we never addressed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That other spiritual warfare, those other demonic forces. Mm-hmm. So we see a build up. Watch this. We see a build up of demonic forces, <laughs> spiritual things, demons. That's why you find that people are. Listen, watch this. Mm-hmm. People, all timers. Yeah, yeah. You have uh, people that are sick. I mean, you can, there's all kinds of sicknesses right. today, you know. Right. COVID-19, it could be a spiritual thing. I, I believe it is, but people going to argue all day long. Yeah, but get a lot of things <laughs> <for that. laughs> Well, here's, here's one of the things, and, and, and I got a question for you, too, that comes from the comments. But one of the things we always quote is uh, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, mm-hmm. but nobody goes back to 13 where mm-hmm. Jesus or God, well, uh-huh. you can say Jesus, but uh-huh. God tells us when he releases these things and then we jump to 14 and skip over 13 and we never have no identity of why the thing is here in the first place right job understood why he was going through we can't understand why we're going through right. and so then we we end up fighting fights we don't fight like you said uh pastor sierra lended us a question tonight and she says how do we deal with the attacks from the enemy that are spiritual such as the torment or tormentor from people's past. Apostle, you spoke about the wiles of the devil, mm-hmm. she says. So how do we deal with the attacks from the enemy that are spiritual, such as the torment or the tormentor from the people's past? I'm going to let my wife answer that. Sure. Oh, wow. So one of the things, one of the key things is one to recognize mm-hmm. what's going on. Mm-hmm. A lot of times we don't, we normalize, society has normalized certain behaviors, certain responses, certain things so much that we don't, we can't acknowledge, like the man of God was saying, Mm -hmm. what is actually going forth here. So there is a, a lack of being able to distinguish between what is an attack or an imagination yeah. that the scripture describes yeah. and tells us what to do with those things. Mm-hmm. When we cannot distinguish between this imagination that I have the authority to cast down mm-hmm. according to God's word, mm-hmm. that imagination becomes real yeah. to us. It becomes a natural thing. Mm-hmm. We know that the spirit can manifest naturally. Again, it goes back to what the word of God teaches us. Yeah. And I realize that there are some people who are not versed in the word. This is why you need to connect with a Bible teaching ministry. Come on, Pastor Wells. This is why you need to get with Bible believing people of God, yeah. not not just Bible preaching, not just Bible telling, but when I say Bible believing, our actions follow what we believe. Mm-hmm. So that's the first step to acknowledge what is going on here. Right. What is this? I know it seems like your enemy is the person that is uh, sitting next to you, taunting you, or somebody from your past, as the question asks. Mm-hmm. But it's not that individual. What is going on is the spirit of the devil that has been assigned to bring you down. Mm-hmm. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Kill your vision. Yes. Kill your hope. Kill your dreams. Kill your promises, mm-hmm. the promises that God have given you. Yeah. So that's the first step. When we acknowledge it, we can apply what the Bible tells us mm-hmm. to apply mm-hmm. to then overcome it. Right. The word says there is no condemnation yeah. for those of us who are in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Then why am I still dealing with this guilt? Why am I still struggling with the shame? Right. When the scripture clearly says there is no condemnation. So then I have to say to myself, the Bible says this is not so. What is going on here? And then seek counsel. Mm-hmm. If you are not at a place, maybe you've not been filled with the Holy Ghost yet. Yeah. But get with some people who have the gift of the Holy Ghost, yeah. some people who are spiritually mature yeah. in these areas, and get the counsel that you need. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Pastor was they, they echoing you. I got a lot of people, they dropping emojis and amens, amen. Uh, our brother uh, Andre, God bless you, my brother who came in, uh, assisted us on Sunday with music. God bless you. He says amen. Sister Shireen says say that, amen. And amen. Uh, you got uh, our sister India who just dropped a bunch of speaking emojis like say it, say it louder for the people in the back, <laughs> amen. But no, I, I love it, absolutely. Apostle, you wanted to add to that? Well, I, I, I want to say, you know, from what my wife said, because there are a lot of people who are they have familiarized themselves with the word. Mm -hmm. They're in a church. Uh, but then there are some who just came to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what do you tell them? Here's what James says. Submit yourself That's therefore good. to God. Yes. Sir. Resist. If you don't, if you're not fluent in the word, if you don't know the scriptures right. right now, if you're not, you know, as, as we are, start off just rebuking them in the name Come of on. Jesus. Come right. on, you know, right. I'm it telling works. everybody, I'm telling anybody, if, you know, you can be experienced, still rebuke him in the name of Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Bible mm -hmm. says, every knee shall bow. Yes. Every tongue shall confess. Yes, sir. So that's what you do. Rebuke him in the name of Jesus. This is the scripture. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist devil. And the Bible said, he will flee from you. Yes. If he ain't fleeing, you ain't rebuke <laughs> come, come on here you come on here yes. <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> you know you don't have to be an expert at it right if oh, he man. ain't leaving you're not rebuking in the name of jesus i love it i love yes, it sir. so wait apostle this is i'm 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 one of those it's easy for me to learn a very simple concept <laughs> so if that devil has not left yet that means my rebuking power has not been activated yet gotcha. something's missing mm -hmm. if that devil keeps showing up that means we're doing something wrong or we're not doing something enough, or something's happening. There's a there's a miss going on in in, in the uh, in the transaction of this enemy and this this presence that we have, or our past keep coming up. There's something missing in this. So you're saying the believer has more work to do. What well, the believer has more work to do, but I want to say this to for, because the Lord just ministered to me. You remember Jesus? That there were some gentlemen, and they were going around um, healing in the oh, name of yes. Jesus. And okay, that's good, sir. In the name of Jesus, and the disciple said, "Hey, you know this man is over here doing this in your name." Mm -hmm. And he says, uh, uh, "Well, what's the problem?" He says, "Um, um huh? they said tell him to stop." Yeah, they said, yeah, 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 yeah. They did. They did. They stop. did. They said, tell him to stop. <laughs> And, and, he, and they said, leave him alone. You know, he, they're doing no harm. Can't be that bad. Can't be that bad. Yeah. Right. Because they're doing it in the name Love of Jesus. Jesus. Right. So I said that to say this, I'm still at, if you're not experienced, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. you don't know the scripture, mm -hmm. the first thing you want to do so that you can get to the point what my wife was saying, resist, rebuke. Yes. After that happens, how do you rebuke something? How do you deal with something if you're constantly being addressed with it? If it's, if it's attacking you all right now it's just attacking you how do i start to address it with scripture how do i address it with prayer mm -hmm. how do i address it with consecration how do i address it with fasting mm -hmm. i can't get there mm -hmm. come on because mm -hmm. i'm dealing with this thing and you keep messing with me mm -hmm. so go ahead. so here's what you do rebuke, rebuke it in the name of jesus resist it in the name of jesus mm -hmm. once he leaves and go to hell from mm -hmm. where he came from right then you can start building a resistance oh oh yes yeah. you did you start building a resistance against him through the scripture through the study through the word of of God. I, I like that. Building a resistance. Yes. Why yes. is that so important, Apostle? Because uh, I think, and I'm going to say something very controversial here. I think some of uh, God's people have built up a tolerance mm -hmm. for the enemy. So now help us build up a resistance. What are these things that we, what can we do to build up a resistance? First of all, I don't think there's anyone who can build up a tolerance for the enemy. I, I'm going to just be honest with you. Mm -hmm. he, he, he wants the enemy comes one way mm -hmm. and let's say that you built up a tolerance you know how to do it he comes another yeah he comes another oh so he, you're saying he's so he keeps coming with something evolve, different yeah he, he evolves. evolves i got you mm -hmm. yes sir and attacking you in every manner or every way he can right that's what he does he's a master of of devices mm -hmm. hey he's been out here longer than any of us yes. so i mean he, yeah. he, he dealt with eve and no, I, I love what my wife was talking about eve and she asked <laughs> she said she has some issues with eve you know <laughs> oh some, sunday yes some people who want to slap eve you know yeah do some things with eve, <laughs> to eve you know oh uh, but again um i, I have to say that we uh, he, the, the devil is just an angel. Yeah, he has. He, he he's he's an angel of God mm -hmm. that God has addressed, and God told the devil specifically, "You can do what you want to Job, yeah, but you better not touch 
his soul. Right. He's saying the same thing to us. Yes. He's saying, you can do this to Derek. You can do this to Corey. Right. Or, but you bet not touch this. Or you bet not. Listen, every attack that you are being faced with so mm -hmm. that you can sit down and calm down yeah. and get a peace at yourself. Everything that you're being attacked with, God has given the enemy the permission to. Wow. Which means in the Wait, end, the same God we worship on Sundays? God you worship, that I pray to? The on, same one. The same one that when I pray over my food? The same one. The same one that heals? Be strong in the <laughs> Lord. Because I think a lot of people don't understand that God gives a, a permission to some things. How are you going to get to where you need to get to unless you go to school? Mm -hmm. Paul said, I finished my course. Right. Mm -hmm. how, how, do you, how do you do it? You have to go through trials and tribulation. And I want to tell you that are watching, God is taking you through because he has something greater, yes. something better. Yes, Man, you, you, you got to wipe oh. your tears because God has something greater. Yes, he has something better for you. Yes, sir. Amen. You just got to get through it first without rebuking it in the name of Jesus. Say that, Apostle. Calm down after that. And then put on the whole armor of God. Say that. Say that, Apostle. Begin your study. Begin your fasting. Begin your seeking God. Because then you'll have not just the scripture of resist the devil. Then you'll be able to, the Bible said, watch as well as pray. Yeah. What I'm watching for. Yeah. I'm watching because the enemy has has knows how to attack me, but I also am watching him because I know that I can put on the whole arm of God. I know that I can do some things, amen, that he won't succeed in all that he's trying to do. That's good, sir. Yeah. That's good. And I do I I want to add one thing. Yeah. Um, because we were talking about the man of God was talking about rebuke. Mm -hmm. Resist. And Pastor Corey, you asked the question about the saints and the rebuking, mm -hmm. and you mentioned this tolerance. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to share what rebuke is. Yeah, please. So it's in a, a sharp disapproval mm -hmm. or critique mm -hmm. and criticism of behavior or action. Oh, I like that. Now, we live in a society now where we are accepting, mm -hmm. we are inclusive of everyone. Yeah. Nobody wants criticism. Nobody wants correction. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is because of the environment that is around us, mm -hmm. we do the same thing when it comes to the enemy. Right, right. We see him going forth. We know he's attacking mm -hmm. us. We mm -hmm. know he's attacking our family. Yeah. We know. And instead of rebuking him, we will do everything else. Yep. We say, you're so oh, right. We'll you're saying it right now, woman of God. Uh, we might go to church. Yep. We'll call up friends and talk about it. Yep. Or we won't talk about it at all with anybody. We'll yep. isolate ourselves yep. and withdraw. But what we've got to do is we've got to be sharply mm -hmm. disapproving mm -hmm. of the enemy's devices and his tactics. We've got to call him out. Amen. I, I got another question for you, Pastor Wells. How do I sharply rebuke something that... I've kind of grown to like now or, or, or grown accustomed to or have a very familiar uh, presence with. How yeah. do I rebuke that thing? Because I think a lot of us. Familiar uh, spirit. Yeah, I think a lot of us, uh, whether, you know, it's easy to target relationship, but let's maybe think outside of the box. Uh, a lot of us have built a, a lot of a, um, a customizations to Absolutely. things that we know are not good for us Let or me. people or groups or places or food, or food yeah. right? We have built these, these uh, uh, familiarities with these things Absolutely. and now they've become part of our life and now they're, they're, now they're making reality shows based on people's lives by doing these things. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we acknowledge it, like you said, mm -hmm. but I, I'm not there yet to like rebuke it and let it and watch it, you know, go or, you know, this stuff you talk about that comes out of the Bible. I'm not there yet. How do I get there? Absolutely. Well, you know what? We start with natural things. Okay. The Bible says we can't understand spiritual things if mm -hmm. we don't first understand natural things. Right. And we do understand natural things. Mm -hmm. The same environment that we uh, have become complacent in and have become so comfortable with is the same environment that can help free us. Right. I'll give you some natural examples. How many in the last 30 to 60 days have tried some sort of diet? Ooh, okay. Whether it's a fad diet. Uh, not me. I, I need to Whether die. It's <laughs> Listen, this quarantine has been blessing me. <laughs> not me. I'm, I'm praying that. We, I'm we praying can still go 
Mm. Yeah, uh, but there's some I'm things supposed to start the gym this week. That's the next example. Mm -hmm. How many times have we signed up for gym membership? Right. New Year's, New Year's resolution. New Year's resolution. Oh, man, don't get exactly. me started on the resolution. Exactly. Ladies, different hairstyles. Right. We will switch it up. So we have the natural skill right. to change. Right, right. Okay. So anything we do in the kingdom, there has to be a will right, because right. God doesn't force us. Right. So for the person who says you're not there yet, mm -hmm. the Bible, the instructions are so simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is no there. Mm -hmm. Do it and you get results. Yeah, I like the, um, I got a couple things too. Uh, well, I want to say this. Sure, yes, sir. Uh, Luke 14 and 31. Somebody put that in the comment section, please. Luke 14, 14 and, 31. and 31, please. And here's, here's what it says. Or what king going to make war yeah. against another king sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him mm -hmm. that cometh against him mm -hmm. with 20,000. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. If you're going to fight something or you're going to deal with something, you need to sit down. Yeah. See, that's one of the things we don't sit down to examine. The Bible says, "Let a man examine, examine himself." himself. Yes, sir. We don't sit down and examine anything. We're so in, we're so we're in a hurry. We're in a hurry. So the enemy has uh, attacked us even more because we don't even know what we're fighting. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's mm -hmm. what my wife is talking about. You, you know, you got the you, you there's spiritual and then there's natural. You're right now, listen. If you know how to operate or deal with some of the things in the natural, mm -hmm. I, I believe the scripture tells us right then you'll be able to understand how to do things in the spiritual. Yes. But, but you got to do with the natural first. Start mm -hmm. Let's start with the natural first. Mm -hmm. Then you can start dealing with spiritual things in high places by rebuking in the name of Jesus and knowing the scripture. Yeah. But you got to sit down and you got to consult some people in the body mm -hmm. of Christ. Mm -hmm. That stuff you're going through, those issues that you have, right. whether it be thoughts of a, a murder, rape, I want to kill somebody, I want to uh, rob a bank, right. uh, all kinds of demonic forces and spirits. Right. You need to sit down and get some consultation. Some you need to be ministered to, because there are demons and there are spirits that are flying in high places that are always attacking every last one of us. But Apostle, I, I have something to say to that. Um, we're, we're in this generation, and I can't tell you the amount of people, even this this year, that I had to I had to tell somebody today. It, you know, a lot of us are trying to. Uh, do all this stuff on our own. Like you just said, sit down, get some consultation, get some help, seek some guidance or any, and then people just don't want to get help, like real help, proper help. Uh, and, I, and I hate to say it though, but it's, it's true. This generation wants to just take on everything by themselves. How do you take on something you know nothing about? I talk with pastors. I comment in the section here. Yes. Uh, uh, India Ellis said, too many of us settle for nothing. Just Nothing. Just settle for the if, if, absolute worst. If and you nothing. settle for nothing, there's nothing there. Right. But I have, I've had pastors come to me, and they have told me themselves, mm -hmm. I don't know how to fight this. I don't know how to deal with this. I don't know. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm tired, you right. know. Right. And we're in a different dispensation now. Listen, when we were coming up, we had Sunday school. We had Bible study. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, we had church. We had church. We had prayer meeting. Yeah. We had church all the time. We, we, we had consumed ourselves with church and God. And, you mm -hmm. know, today people say we're fanatics. If you, if you do it today, that you, that's just being a fanatic. Yeah, you know? Jesus freaks, right. they call us. Um, but those are the things that kept us out of the danger zone. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. um, but when you're dealing with when you're dealing with so many things, how do you handle one thing when you got several things coming to you Come all on. at yeah. one time? Yeah. Again, this is why you need to seek counsel. This is why you need a church. You need AWC, yeah. or altar worship. Center. Come on, listen, uh, people of God, we would love for you to come meet us at the altar at 1030 on Sunday mornings. Amen. Amen. Shameless plug, but thank you, Apostle, for that. I appreciate it. Amen. Altar Worship Center, our church is open, 2806 North 22nd Street. Somebody put it in the comment section. Somebody Amen. Needs, somebody needs to meet me at the altar. Meet me at the altar. That's our theme, and that's our slogan. Listen, you need help, meet me at the altar. Amen. You need guidance? Meet me at the altar, 2806 North 22nd Street. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you, Apostle, for that. We'll get some hand claps on that one. Amen. Uh, Pastor Sierra asked a question. Uh, she said, is it, uh, is it possible to rebuke oneself? And uh, it, it, it can be so easy to rebuke things, people, 
um, that we see uh, out of others or the enemy. But what um, I have found is that uh, a lot of people can, it seems like she's asking, uh, it seems like it's so easy to rebuke outside things, external things, but can we rebuke, you know, ourselves? Can we re rebuke For, what's okay. in us? Yeah. So, is she, well, is she asking, can I rebuke the things that are in me? I believe that's what she's saying. Of course. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, indeed. Mm -hmm. We have to. We, uh, the enemy introduces to Come on. us. What did you say, honey? Physician heal uh, themselves. Oh, physician, that's right. Yes. Uh, the enemy, that's why we examine ourselves. Yeah. The Bible says, let a man examine himself. Mm -hmm. Because once you put on that examination, once you start diagnosing yourself, mm -hmm. you realize that there's some things in you that are still spirits of unforgiveness. Hello, right. somebody. Right, right. Hello, somebody. That unforgiveness I thing is strong. On the power of forgiveness. Yes. You, you've got that. That's one of the number one things. Mm -hmm. Yes. That puts you in a position where any demonic force will attack you. Right. If you don't have an unforgiven heart, any enemy, any spirit can attack you. Right, right. But uh, I rebuke things daily. Somebody say daily. 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 Somebody yes. out there say daily. Come on, put it in the comment yeah. section. Daily, I, I, yes. I rebuke things daily. Yes. I mean, you should see me. You know, Paul said we die daily. And what he's saying is uh, I rebuke things daily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm Cast them down. Yeah, I, I have to. Yes. because. Uh huh. Some people act certain ways. You know, when I meet certain people, and people act certain ways, and people do certain things. Mm -hmm. You know, I was a pastor before I retired. You know, <laughs> and uh, you know, I had to resist the devil, rebuke the devil, and rebuke this. My shut up. You know, just be quiet. Right. Me and my wife have this thing where I, I will say she'll say something funny to me, and the enemy. I said, "Ah, uh -uh, say that. I'm not gonna say that to her. <laughs> no, you stop it." <laughs> You stop this saying, and I'm not going to say that. Yeah. You know, so you have to resist the devil. You have to rebuke him. You yes. know, and, yes. and, and that's in you because guess what? I preach the message in a me. In a me. In a me. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, we got to get some of that, me. Apostle. We got to bring that back. Yes. We got to bring message, that back. That message do need to come back. Yeah. Amen. You know, yeah, we need to bring me. that back. Yeah. So we have to, yes, we have to rebuke. We have to resist. We have to, you know, um, always stay in prayer. That's why God asks us to stay in prayer, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, Jesus was always in prayer and always wanted the disciples to be in prayer, yeah. you know. He stayed on his course with what he was here to do in the three years he was here because he stayed in prayer. Right. We need to stay in prayer because every time you commune with the Father, mm -hmm. you begin to have some revelation, some knowledge. He speaks to us. He tells us. Right. Amen. Right. Uh, he went to the... Uh, uh, Moses went to the f to the tree that was you know burning but not burning but he got a word. Mm -hmm. He went mm -hmm. to the mountain mm -hmm. you know because he had to he, he, God was wanted to speak to him. He was in the wilderness for yes, four summer, but he, God spoke to him. You got to get some place with God so He can speak to you, right. so He can minister to you because your breakthrough is in the voice and yeah. the consultation, consultation mm -hmm. of God speaking through you to you, maybe in a dream, a yes. vision, yes. or maybe through your pastor that's why you gotta have a pastor you gotta have one you gotta have a pastor how can they hear without a preacher that's what it says without a pastor mm -hmm. you can't hear without a pastor mm -hmm. you know and how can you hear him unless he's been sent from god that's it that's it and we ain't gonna go into the rest of that apostle <laughs> <laughs> i think you called it but uh one of the things i i, I took note of too on sunday it, 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 in early part of your message you said uh in order for god to work a perfect work and, and remember this message was um um I'm not finished. Put me back in. You said in order for God to work a perfect work, you're going to have to sit down, shut up, and organize your life. That is right. And what I was talking about is the Bible said, be ye perfect as I am perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect is a process. Mm -hmm. you, you can't be perfect overnight. That's true. Uh, and so, but in the old school of the church, mm -hmm. when we were coming up in the Pentecostal church uh Church of Christ or, you know, whatever denomination it was, right. we were always told once we got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, we were instantaneously perfect. <laughs> mm -mm. And so we that religion. Walked, yes. Not my experience. Right. But so what we did Me neither. is we, well, yes, when I, we walked around trying to visualize a perfect life yeah. behind people, yeah. you know, not letting people know when we should have uh, consulted the mothers of yeah. the church, the yeah. deacons of the church, the preacher of the church, you know. And so um, 
uh, the per- living a perfect life is a process. Yeah. You got to go through some things. You got to deal with some things. Yeah. You got to rebuke some things. You know, you got to take some classes. You know, you got to get back into Bible study. You got to get back in. We want who has Sunday school now? Oh, my God. Yeah, who I know. Sunday school. Sunday school what, is, what is a Sunday, Sunday school? school Sunday life. school seems like it got coronavirus now. It, it, it don't even exist. <laughs> you know, it doesn't. People yeah. love this coronavirus, that they love being at home. Yeah. And, and don't get me wrong, but I'm going to tell you, we had church on Sunday. We sure did. Amen. Both Twice. We had church. We had church. Mm-hmm. And it was so good to feel like, hey, we're back here. Listen, there's nothing too hard for God. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and, and God, God moved in the place. But again, we have to understand that if we are going to, to be these, this Christian disbeliever, we are going to have to study. Mm-hmm. We're going to have to seek God. Yes, sir. We're going to have to apply the scriptures. Yes, sir. And we're going to have to get in a church. Did I say get in a church? Get in a get church. In a get a shepherd, a leader to help you get to the next level yes. of your life. Yes. Because we're dealing with a group of people now that they are so much in a hurry. Mm-hmm. They're caught up in themselves. Um, they, they don't, they, they, they don't want to deal mm-hmm. with what they're going through. They right. want somebody else to take that over. Right. Here, take right. My, here honey, take my, take my trials and you handle it for me, please. That's what they're looking for. But Apostle, Jesus Christ gave us some very, very awesome good news. He says uh, his uh, uh, his burden is is light. His yoke is easy. And so for us, we shouldn't be walking around here all heavy when we can give this up over to over to the Lord. We we don't have to carry these things because he's already done this for us. He already defeated. He's he's told us I've already uh, conquered these things. And so we we walk around heavy. And broke down because we haven't done, like you gave us the instructions, sit down, shut up, yeah. and organize our lives. And so instead, organizing our lives to us means just carrying everything, just taking it all by ourselves and doing it all our way and never really trusting God or seeking guidance in, in anything. But I, I would rather just trust God and just take on what it is that he's giving us instead of taking on what the world has put out there or what's out there on social media or what's coming through the word of mouth of friends and family and different things like that. And I think that's what causes uh, a continual cycle mm-hmm. because we're, we're tapping into the wrong source or resource. Well, we're dealing with an unchurched generation now. Mm-hmm. Listen, I know what a church generation is. Mm-hmm. I, I came from one. Yes, sir. So even when I started a church some time ago, I went in, and some other pastors, if you're listening, you know, I went in, and I went in as that old school, you know, ready to do this, ready to do that. Right. But I, I found out I was dealing with an unchurched generation. Mm-hmm. Pastor Corey, a lot of people really don't know Jesus. Ooh. I, I, mm-hmm. I, I, can't even, I can't even debate that with you, sir, because it's true. You can see it now, today. They don't know who Jesus is. They don't know he died on the cross. Yeah. They don't know, you know, just like we as a, 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 a as a, as a, um, a group of, as a people mm-hmm. don't know our heritage, mm-hmm. where we came from. You know, mm-hmm. there are a lot of people who don't know, uh, what King stood for. Right. You know, right. there are a lot of people who don't know what Jesus stood for. And I want to tell you something. And if you're listening, if you're listening, you know, it's the truth. And right now, don't too many people care. Yeah, yeah. Social network came on the scene with a gangster lean. Yes. And decided to make me the star. Mm-hmm. And so if you if I'm if I'm being made the star, mm-hmm. I don't need to know about the star of David. Mm. Mm. So that's what's really going on now. A lot of people are trying to get in that social network, trying to get their numbers up, trying to get their thumbs up. But a lot of people don't know about Jesus. They yeah. they have no idea. We learned about him in Sunday school, yeah. Bible class. We learned about him because our grandmother popped us upside mm-hmm. the head and said, Jesus is the reason, your boy. You know, <laughs> we learned the 23rd Psalms. We learned how to do the mm-hmm. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Mm-hmm. There are people who don't even know that G- who Jesus is. Yeah. Yeah. And I wanted to add, sure. you know, we're talking about um, – this was one of the things that the Lord ministered on Sunday mm-hmm. is about that spirit of isolation. Yes, go there, go there. You know, Eve had an eye problem. Yes, yes. And when we look at society to now, now we see that same thing is going on. Mm-hmm. This spirit of isolation, yes. this spirit of I, I mm-hmm. you know, yes. only, yes. lonely yes. one. Yes. And so what is happening is 
we see entire groups who don't want to connect around the institution of church, right. which for us historically as a people, mm -hmm. church was a cornerstone of our livelihood. Yes, right. yes, it was. And it was valued. And we understood the power of community. Mm -hmm. We understood the power of coming together yep. and gathering and purpose in that. Now, for us in the body of Christ, I wanted to share this, too, because the Holy Spirit just dropped it on me while mm -hmm. you all were talking. The, the believer, the, the burden that you talked about, Pastor Corey, where yeah. Jesus said, you know, take my yoke upon yeah. you and learn yeah. of me yeah. uh, because I'll make my yoke easy. I'll easy. make my burden light. light. Yeah. What has happened is, as the body of Christ, we've laid aside mm. the burden of Christ. Because when we truly take that burden on, yeah. we have a, a longing and insatiable desire to see other people saved, delivered, and made free. Can you repeat that again? I love how you just put that together. That was, that was perfect. Can you say that again? It was. It really was. That was awesome. Yes. When we are truly, when we truly have, uh, we take on that burden of Christ, mm -hmm. we have an insatiable desire to see people saved, delivered, and made free. Right. And that's what's happening. It all goes back to I. Mm -hmm. I'm focused on me. Yeah. I'm focused on what I need. I am in a church or I'm connected. I'm saved. So I'm not delivering. I'm not ministering the word to anybody else like I should be. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Uh, don't stop the amens and the likes now because yeah. I know this is a little heavy for some yeah. of us. No, it's good. But it's a reality check that the Holy Ghost dropped in my spirit mm -hmm. as we were talking. Mm -hmm. We don't. We say, well, I went to church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I, I tried to tell them. How many times we say, I tried to tell them? Yeah. Or we might tell somebody something, but we're not living an example before oh, them. Oh, my God. Pastor, come on here. So, ooh, that's, that's that, uh, th that word that we sometimes don't use as often and true as we should, but that hypocritical mm -hmm. uh, uh, lifestyle. We, 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 we reach this and we do this and we say this, but then on the flip side, that's not who we are. But I, I like that, um, too, as well, that you were mentioning about the isolation. You gave us some other things that fits right into that as well. Um, Sunday evening, you told us about um, uh, Eve and her eyes, isolation. She was into herself. She mm -hmm. was idle, which is unproductive, and she was inexperienced. And all of these things are causing us to lose the, the focus. Like you said, we laying aside the burden of mm -hmm. Christ or, or the work of the kingdom yeah. or uh, – we've lost the sensitivity of the spirit because of these things. Um, if you could just kind of elaborate on it a little bit more for the people, just those other eyes that, that followed into that. Yes, absolutely. So we were talking about the conversation that Eve had with the serpent. Mm -hmm. we we're talking about, we went back to the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> we went back to the fact that when God set us up, he set us up. Yes, he did. Yes, <laughs> yeah. he did. It was his yes, intent for us to have dominion. Yes. It was his intent for us to be fruitful and yes. productive. Yes. And he gave Adam and Eve one do not mm -hmm. for wow. every do right. that he gave. And so what we saw happen when we were talking about um, Eve having an eye problem, mm -hmm. we talked about isolation right. because the conversation that she had with the serpent was when she was apart from Adam. Right. Adam was fulfilling the purpose that God had given him. He told Adam, you will name everything I've created. Correct. And he told Eve, you're to be his helper. So tell me, why was she not alongside of him helping him? Right. Right. She was mm. idle. Yes, and the serpent <laughs> saw the opportunity yeah. to intervene. Yeah. And that's what happened. So she was isolated. She was idle. Um, she was into herself mm -hmm. because she didn't stop to think about the consequences. How many times have we made a decision about our own lives mm -hmm. and we don't think about the consequences oh my. or the impact oh my. to the kingdom? A lot of times. Mm -hmm. A lot of times. We do, we do it daily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We make decisions, we react or we act, and then we think about the consequences if we're forced to. Yeah. That's because we're fulfilling that fleshly 
appetite. We're mm-hmm. into ourselves. That's right. That's another That's right. eye. That's right. Yeah, and then inexperience. Mm-hmm. And um, we were talking about that earlier, Pastor Corey, you yeah. brought that up. Well, how do you do this when you don't know? And Apostle, you mentioned, I'm not there yet. What yeah. do I do? Yeah. She was inexperienced when it came to the rules of engagement. Right. Ooh, and instead wow. of getting having that conversation with Adam, because he, he received the instruction before she did. Right. He was off to a great start. He mm-hmm. was doing, fulfilling the purpose mm-hmm. that he was created for and mm-hmm. designed for. Mm-hmm. She was inexperienced with this dominion that God had given her. Wow. So she made a very bad decision. Now, a lot of times we want to say with this particular story, the bad decision was that she ate of the fruit. No, the bad decision was the conversation that she engaged in. Right, right, right. So we have to take it back a step. Yes, absolutely. Listen, uh, just those very opportunities of conversation is getting us in a lot of bondage and a lot of uh, issues. Uh, Sometimes we acquire sickness and and different things through uh, just conversations in that sort. And you're right. She I love the part that you mentioned about the rules of engagement. She did not uh, quite fulfill Mm -hmm. the the uh, agreement or the, the covenant and the commandment that she had. That was already there, set in place. Sometimes we abandon or we neglect those those rules, or we uh, for you know we forego them all together because something looks good. But, you know, you know. And later on in that scripture, we understand that when she saw that it was good to eat, that's mm-hmm. when she took of it. But you know, in this time and in this world that we live in, we understand that a lot of things that look good to us aren't good to us or for us. Yeah, yeah. and you know, we're overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. You know. As my wife was saying, mm-hmm. we had dominion. Yeah. We are, some of us are overwhelmed mm-hmm. with just too much mm-hmm. that sidetracks us and gets us caught up into something that we should not be caught right. up in. Right. You know? So you can look at it in two ways. Like she said, mm-hmm. we had this dominion. We had all of this. We were, we're instructed. We, 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 God told us, you, you got this. You, we, we, we're over this. You, you're a ruler over this. You have dominion over this. You know, but sometimes... Maybe some some of our dominion of we're overwhelmed with so much that we're like children mm-hmm. spoiled, mm-hmm. and so we get so wrapped up. To you know, you have you ever noticed a spoiled person who has a lot doesn't pay attention to to it again? Mm, you, that's you, true. You, when you got so much, you know, you give some you give a child a doll and they're so overwhelmed they got this doll, and, but two days later. They got something else. Right. They're overwhelmed. They right. got so much. Right. So, so, so I need something else to that I can be attracted to that right. can get my attention. Who came in? Who came in? The serpent came in. Mm-hmm. He came in, mm-hmm. and again, we're you know Adam was fine. He he was able to deal with dominion, having dominion. He sat there. Oh, this is great. I'm you know I'm, I'm in charge of all of this. But she wanted. More. Yeah. More gets us in trouble. Come on, Apostle. More gets us in trouble. Mm-hmm. Listen, I can only tell you that because I know. I, I, I went through it. More gets us in trouble. Mm-hmm. Every time. And I want to tell you about uh, what you, you were mentioning about um, uh, the church. You know, the church doesn't even bring people to Christ like they used to. Right. We also ourselves have become overwhelmed by you know, this or that or society or, 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 or what, or the enemy or, or over, over, over trying to cater to people so right, much right. that I, have you ever noticed that? If you ever noticed that after we preached, the first thing we did was say, if you don't know Jesus, absolutely. if you don't know Jesus, mm-hmm. please absolutely. come. We don't, you don't hear that anymore. Yeah. You don't hear that anymore. Mm-hmm. And so we need to get back to bringing Christ, speaking of Christ, bringing Christ back into our sanctuary. Front and center. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. I mm-hmm. preached a message called Back to the Basics at the beginning of this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, back to the, well, actually, when coronavirus hit, mm-hmm. the Lord ministered to me, we need to get back to the basics, back mm-hmm. to the basics of the works that we were doing. Yeah. 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 Don't wanna, a lot of people don't want to do it. Yeah. Well, you know, you, we talked about earlier, too, there was a time where we had different sources you know there was sunday school we had three services mm-hmm. on sunday yeah. we had middle of the week service you know rehearsal youth service all of these were opportunities mm-hmm. for 
those seeds mm-hmm. to be embedded in our spirit and to grow our spirit. Right. Well, right. now all of these other things in our lives have taken that place and we can see the impact to our society. Mm-hmm. We're, you know, we've gone beyond the individual impact to family to now this broader, more global impact mm-hmm. on on society and the body of Christ as a whole. And and I, I can't I'm sorry to keep bringing it up, but yeah. the Holy Ghost is just putting it on my spirit that we and when I say we all of us as believers, yeah. we're held accountable. Amen. Um, we are going to be held mm-hmm. accountable for it yeah. when we as the Bible declares it that great and awful day <laughs> yeah. it's great and awful yeah. day of judgment we are going to be held accountable for the souls that we helped convert mm-hmm. and reach and and snatch back from the gates of hell yeah. or, or the souls that we have not reached absolutely yes, so absolutely we, we yeah it works even, both ways we don't even reach souls anymore yes sir there's no outreach in your church anymore we don't teach. When I first came, let me tell you, when I first got saved, I'm going to be honest with you. When I first got saved, no one ministered to me about outreach. They didn't. They did not. And so the Holy Spirit dealt with me when I started my first church to make sure, and, and a shout out to Bishop Keith Williams of uh, oh, uh, yes. Amazing Faith. Amen. I Amen. Mi- I ministered to him and mm-hmm. taught him an outreach. Mm-hmm. He then took it from me. And I like to say it like that. He probably won't say it, but he took it and took it to another level. Right. Yeah. But we had in Raw Nation, uh, in Raw Nation in, in um, Maryland, we had outreach on every Saturday. Every Saturday. Mm-hmm. Every Saturday. Some Fridays we had it, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. and 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 that's how the church grew. That's how we obtained members. That's how you know we reached souls. You know, because right. even if they didn't come in, we still reached them to bring right. them to Christ. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, and so. I, I'm, I just love what my wife is saying. This, uh, again, this, this, that care is not there any longer. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, and I wanted to say this: uh, How do you, how do you help yourself? How do you help a church? How do you help a nation? Uh, and these are notes that I had that I didn't get to on Sunday. Yes, some of, some, some of some of us don't have this power or this ability to fight an enemy or an adversary. Mm-hmm. How do you get it? Like my wife said, how do you get it? Yeah. Through training. So we have to go to Bible mm-hmm. uh, studies. Yes, sir. We have to. We, we need to get Sunday school put back up. We need discussions like this. On Can I just say to Apostle, it's, it, with that, we just need to make ourselves more available for God. And this is yes. the most opportune time Yes. For God's people yes. to be available yes. for their God, yes. for God, yes. you know, and so it's 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 interesting to me that all of these things have been established in the church, mm-hmm. and the one time that you have the most time to <laughs> to get there and to be there and to be a part, you're MIA, yep. and, and it's the it's the it's the greatest. Uh, a mystery I've ever seen with people in a year, in a calendar year, I've never seen so many people have all the time to do everything else, everything else, yeah. everything else. You call for an outreach. They don't have time. You call for a Bible study. They don't have time. Meeting they don't have time. leadership. It's, it's amazing. Prayer night. If your church revival, service, if your church service goes over a certain amount of time, Guess what? Oh, they tap out. You, they tap oh, out. Oh, please don't get past an hour and a half. They done. They tap out, and you're out of order. You're out of order. They don't want to do church. Well, to them. They, you're out of order. But, but, but wait, wait, Pastor. Yeah, I'm you with you. This. No, I'm with you. Go ahead. But they're on that phone flipping for three hours. Say so. Four hours. Say so. Five hours. Yep. And they're mesmerized. They're, they're glued. Oh, yes. And they can't see. In any capacity, that there's something wrong here. I'm addicted. I have an addiction now yeah. because that spiritual warfare that we were talking about mm-hmm. has just transformed, has just made, it, has become a, a spirit yeah. that is allowing you to be drawn in. Yeah. It's a demonic force. I think uh, uh, something in high place, some That's darkness right. there, mm-hmm. and it's drawing you in. Mm-hmm. And until you understand that I, I have a problem yeah. here, yeah. listen, this thing's this problem here is bigger than divorce rate. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Listen, this thing is 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 is, 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 is wiping cigarettes out. Yeah, people will smoke. You know, people that used to smoke a cigarette every day. Now they smoke cigarettes. They uh, do this. 
every hour, mm-hmm. every every thirty minutes, mm-hmm. you know. And so we, we, I'm, I'll be glad when COVID nineteen is over because we need people. If you don't know it, you don't believe it. We need to get back to church. Yeah, Amen. we need to get back to church. And Apostle too, you know, with the twofold thing about this. So, you know, people. And I have, you know, a whole revelation about this, you know, church hurt stuff. But then, you know, forget that. If you want to talk about church hurt, people come to the church looking like they're hurt. Like the church, like being at church is killing them. Right, it's right. like you, <laughs> it, it is just, you can't wait to get out of there. I, I'll be seeing people, I mean, you never called an Uber before until Sunday. <laughs> I mean, my God, you can't you can't stick around for a couple minutes to fellowship, to just love, no. to just receive a word, to pray. I mean, it just people and just you know, the Bible oh says, my God, not to assemble yourself. It does. It does. Fellowship ye one with another. Mm-hmm. They don't even want to fellowship anymore. And no. you know, I want to say, you know, the Bible also teaches us that there is nothing new under the sun. Mm-hmm. An apostle uh, had this saying, and he still says it, but it's straight out of Scripture. It's Joshua twenty four. Mm-hmm. I love Joshua. Yes. yes, and it says in the King James version. I'm going to share that. this version. Mm-hmm. And if give that it, scripture one more time so we can make sure we get yes, it in there. Joshua twenty four. Yeah, Joshua twenty four and fifteen, guys. And my husband would solicit this question. He Basically, says, a lot of times at funerals. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. But he says, if you don't like church, don't go to heaven. Yeah. And it's based on this passage. It says, and if it seem evil unto you mm-hmm. to serve the Lord, mm-hmm. choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served yeah. that were on the other side of the flood yeah. or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. Yeah. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Yes. We have this same choice today yep. Yep. to serve the gods of your fathers. Mm-hmm. Okay, we were talking about that spiritual DNA mm-hmm. Sunday night. Yep. Yep. You have to look back and see which mm-hmm. gods your fathers surrendered to yep. and submitted and yielded their vessels to. Yep. Or the gods of the people in the land that you live, yeah. you dwell. Yeah. So that's your environment. That's the society that we live in now. Mm-hmm. Those are your friends. Yeah. Okay, you're dwelling in a land. Mm-hmm. You're you're surrounding yourself with a certain group of people, mm-hmm. with a certain category of people. Mm-hmm. They have certain beliefs. They deal in all kinds of demonic forces. Yeah. They open the door to the enemy, mm-hmm. and you unbeknownst, unaware, Mm -hmm. not recognizing because you're not praying, you're not fasting, you're not seeking the counsel, so you can't see the demonic force that they're carrying with them that is only there, it's riding along with them. You You are the assignment for that particular demonic force. Also, then you made the choice. Made the choice. Choose ye this Choose, day. Choice. Choose ye. And you yep. know, I did, remember, honey, I did that message. Uh, the message I did was uh, my forefathers yes. made me a poor father. Right. And and that, that entailed of whatever I was getting from these forefathers, this, this, this knowledge of, uh, you know, whether it came down to poverty, whether it came down to what was correct and what was not right. They uh, believing in their traditions mm-hmm. um, and what they felt, you know. You remember, I used, I used to tell people, my grandmother said, Boy, don't put that coat hanger on the back of that door. That don't bring bad luck. Boy, you that boy. You, oh, man. You my mama scarred me with so much. I had to wait till college to break some stuff. <laughs> it, they messed me up. Don't you split that pole, boy. Don't you split. But my forefather, with the thoughts of what they thought, made Love me you, a mama. poor father. Made me a poor father. Yeah. Now, here's another thing. Here's another thing. Uh, when you look at it, when we were coming up, we didn't have all this electronics, right? You know, but now believe this. Now watch this. Every religion, every cult, everything that was negative to uh, society or what's going forth in society now mm-hmm. was already there, right? Now, now it was. It mm-hmm. was. In, it was in the encyclopedias. It was in libraries. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Every now and then, you heard some. Remember, there was there was there was some censorship over some of the stuff. Mm-hmm. We didn't get all the stuff, but there was right. some censorship. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now you have Google, you have some internet uh, gateway mm-hmm. to get whatever you can. Yes, sir. All right. So since I was brought up in the church, Pastor Corey, 
and and I got and 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 I, I, I was able to ascertain it and, and gain faith from it, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I became a church boy and mm -hmm. I studied the scripture. But guess what? Now I have this other instrument because mm -hmm. you know we didn't have no encyclopedias when we were coming up. Right. We didn't have no way of you know uh, getting any information. You know. Right. So unless we heard it from. It was else. not instant. Exactly. Right. So now we have this. This internet, this iPad, yeah. this this stuff that we're going to. So you're finding that most of your believers, why, this is why this is an unchurched generation. Yes, sir. You're finding that a lot of people now, and pastors can agree with this, you're finding that a lot of your people in church are not glued to, to the scriptures, mm -hmm. to the Bible, mm -hmm. uh, to the knowledge, to prayer, mm -hmm. etc. Because guess what? The other information that they're getting. Mm -hmm. and, and let me say this. The information is not coming to them. They're going to get it. Yeah, yeah. And when they go and get it, it takes them by force. Yeah. Mm. Because it's a spirit. It's a spirit, Pastor Corey. Mm -hmm. So when you go searching in a underground market or darkness, uh, the black whatever, yes, sir. you're going to get what you're looking for. Yes, sir. And so this thing that you're looking for, the Bible's in the dark, uh, 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 principalities, things in high places, things in darkness, they're going to overwhelm you. and uh, Listen, they've been out here longer than you have. Yes, sir. And so that's why the church is suffering, I mean, largely today because of the information yeah. that is being put out that you're yeah. able to get. Remember, we didn't have any all of that. So we, we, we were locked on the scriptures, right. 66 books. Right. But now I can be whatever I want to be. Yes, sir. I can serve whoever I want to serve. Yes, sir. I know about religion. There's some people know about religions that... I even I haven't even heard about. I'm telling you. See what happens when you start talking about the principalities and all that kind of stuff. And, and as you can see, we got a powerhouse in, in here with us tonight. So we apologize for the system error, but we are back live. So please go ahead and reshare, reshare now. Share, share, share. Please share. Let's get our numbers back up. Um, hopefully a lot of you did not get fatigued and just go on anywhere else. But please get in here. Um, we got a few more minutes to kind of dive into some more things that we didn't get to cover. So go ahead and, and share this broadcast. We are back. Let people know to come back to the altar. We are back here again. So go ahead and share the broadcast with your network of people. And uh, prayerfully, we won't incur, um, incur another technical issue. But if possible, um, if that does happen, we'll just upload everything. All of these messages and Bible studies are uploaded directly to YouTube, so you won't miss a thing there. Uh, but while we're live, hopefully we won't experience another technical error. So we want to still give this space as much as possible to the man and woman of God. They're doing a phenomenal job uh, in the house tonight. So come on, let's appreciate them while they're here. Let's appreciate them. Um, and the, the very works that they're doing. So go ahead and share this again, please, people of God. Uh, hit the share button and uh, help us out tonight as uh, the enemy is very, 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 very upset. All right. So, uh, guys, come on in here and uh, and share the broadcast. All right. Amen. Amen. We are back live. Let the people know we are back live. Amen. All right. So, Pastor Wells and Apostle Wells. You see what happens, y'all, too? Y'all come and shut stuff down. I ain't never had my Bible study <laughs> shut down in the middle of my stream. <laughs> y'all some powerful people. My God. Lord have mercy. But uh, it, all is well, people of God. Come on, let's get these numbers back up. Uh, looks like we're, we're climbing. We're climbing, which is good. Come on, guys. Y'all know y'all need this word. Come on in here. I'm not finished. Put me back in. Look at that, Apostle. We was not finished. <laughs> <laughs> Put so in. put me back in. Hey man, we charged and up. Pay attention. And, and pay attention. I'm come on, can you put that in the comment section? I'm not finished. Put me back in and pay attention. That's the word of your life right there. So people of God, uh, let's climb. Let's get these numbers back. Shout out to all of you that return. Hey man, let me just give you a quick shout out while you're here. Sister Amy, thank you for getting back in. Sister April, Sister Katanya, uh, Mama D, I see you. Sister Robin, God bless you. Sister Sharice, you're back. Sister Stephanie, amen. Who else is uh, uh, SB? The armor bearers are in the house tonight. God bless you all. Uh, brother James, God bless you, my brother, for getting in here. If you're getting in now, get in now. Why is good? The oven is hot. Come on, let's get in here. Sister Maybe Marie, I see you. Ask more, questions. Ask more questions. If you have questions from the previous stream that you just uh, watched and got back in, 
in here, you didn't get to ask your question or maybe we didn't see it right away, go ahead and do that now. Um, it, you know, we're going to be on here just for a little bit longer. But please, let's engage. Let's engage. Take this opportunity to uh, get this good word and get these responses and answers that you need. You need this word. Sister Tawana, God bless you. Our sister, uh, for being here. Sister Charlene, God bless you for coming back in. Amen. You guys are awesome. Y'all got this thing back up. I appreciate you. And shout out to you all for doing the good work and fighting the good fight. All right. I'm not finished. Put me back in and pay attention. We're here with the Wells, the powerhouse, the Wells, who are the overseers of the Holy Bible Christian Ministries. Amen. Which we are a part of. Altar Worship Center. Shout out. If you need a church home, come meet us at the altar. 2806 North 22nd Street. We are always here Sundays at 10 30 Tuesday nights at 7 30 live for Bible study which is the most dynamic and awesome Bible study you can probably be a part of not probably for sure for certain so guys you're in the right place at the right time uh, we want to kind of kick back off I, after all of that I mean there's so much <laughs> to uncover uh, I love it thank you SB for putting it in I'm not finished put me back in pay attention hey, amen you guys are echoing the message I love it I love it I love it we're putting everything on notice amen all right so uh, uh, Apostle, I believe you were um, on, a, on a mention here And uh, maybe you want to go a different course But however, uh, take us there, sir, wherever you want us to go Well, I just want to make sure that we understand what we're here for We want to give you the knowledge of this particular enemy This thing that is fighting mm -hmm. us every day Attacking us every day right. If by some possible way you know how to address Amen Or to, 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 to uh, address this, this demonic force of this spirit you will live a very beautiful and prosperous yes, life. Sir. Yes, sir. People ask me and my wife all the time, how in the world do you all make it in your relationship? You know, they, they call us cute all the time. You're so <laughs> cute, you know. We, we, you know, we, we make, we, you know, we tell people we fight on Tuesdays. Tuesdays are our fight days. Yes, you know? sir. And so, but we, we got to Tuesday and we don't have nothing to fight about. Yeah, we're in Bible you know? study. Yeah. Well, I just, I just want the people Tonight. to know. Well, well verify that a little bit, Apostle, because with this internet world, let me warn you, they'll take something and run with it. So well, kind of. I say fight. Okay, we, please. We, we don't have anything because. I got to protect my pastors, y'all. <laughs> because we live such a, <laughs> because we live such a peaceful life and we are led by the spirit of God, we acknowledge the enemy when he comes in as a flood or yeah. come to try to attack me or attack mm -hmm. her yeah. to act a certain way or be a certain way. Yeah. We support and help each other to identify. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Some see, see, there's some couples are ashamed and say, well, honey, not an enemy using you today. Yeah. You know? And so when we say that, you know, the other couple get, the other person gets angry and upset. He ain't using me. He's using you. Yeah. you know? <laughs> and so, um, when, because the fight is not between me and her. Right. It's the trick of the enemy to bring discourse and bring confusion so that we won't be able to have a peaceful marriage to bring forth the word of God, which right. is placed in our spirit. Right, right. And, uh, you know, years ago, years ago, and I did a study, you know, uh, the Catholic Church knew about demons. They 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 had certain priests that exercised demons, mm -hmm. uh, and they would go. And you you, you you know you've seen the movie The Exorcist. Mm -hmm. A lot of this stuff is real. Yeah, yes. yeah. And, uh, and and I said that to say this, and I know, I know we're going we're going we're going really deep now. Okay. You know, um, take us there. Sir. But there are some things that we need an exorcist for. Yeah. Did yes. I say that? Yes, you did. You know, yes. there are things that we need an exorcist that, that we need a, a leader, a shepherd, a prophet, mm -hmm. an evangelist, mm -hmm. someone who can come in, an overseer yes, who can come in and say, "Hey, listen, I I have this addiction. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to get rid of it. I need it exercised out of me." Yeah. And, and some of me will, 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 will exercise what the Bible said through the name of Jesus. Yes. yes. We're going to bring the scriptures, the Bible, the we're going to we're going to pray, we're going to fast. You know, we're going to discern. We there there are a lot of people. I hate to bring it on the air. No, bring it, sir. But I know some people some folks are going to say something, but if you read your Bible, you will understand that Jesus dealt with a lot of things that he Exercise mm -hmm. some demons yes. mm -hmm. out of things, mm -hmm. and they went into the pigs. Y'all remember that? Yes, sir. And they, they they went into the water. They drowned themselves. Uh, that is going on today, but we don't want to acknowledge right. that there these demons are still with us today. Right, yes. right. Yeah, and man, I got. I, I love what you're saying because this is what we don't talk about mm -hmm. anymore mm -hmm. yeah. in the body of Christ. But it goes back to 
each of us having a role and each of us having a purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked earlier about the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, uh, 10 and 11 tells us, and I, God gave some. Mm. Yeah. Say it, honey. And Say there it. and and there and we talk about the fivefold ministry, Say it, honey. Say it. but we don't want to one acknowledge that we need these parts of the body. Yeah. Two. We don't, uh, a lot of times when I say we don't, I mean just generally. I'm speaking very generally, not judgmentally, mm -hmm. just making observations mm -hmm. of what we are encountering as leaders in the kingdom. Uh, generally what happens is we think it goes back to that I. Yeah. We mm -hmm. think that as a pastor in a church, I'm the pastor. I can do it all. Mm -hmm. Can't do it. There's no place for an apostle. There's no place for prophet. A, a prophet. There's right. no place for the teacher. My God, we practically shut down Sunday school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. God forbid that a teacher can teach anything other than Sunday school. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. Don't get me started on that one. Well, your message Sunday will have to be cut out. Oh, my. <laughs> because you did a work. <laughs> and uh, hello? And, and the evangelist. Yeah. And it goes on. And there are various gifts of helps. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing that I wanted to mention, and I know we're, we're, we're wrapping up. No, take your time. You're fine. You mentioned this ability to exercise mm. the this, this spirits. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we can see the enemy at work again here trying to take trying my to voice. Yeah. Trying to stop you. You're always let trying. Me, let me... That, let me just rightly divide the word of truth mm -hmm. for those who are listening. God provided everything we could have ever needed. Yeah. Now, he gave us instruction. He tells us to work out our soul, soul salvation. salvation with yeah. fear and trembling. Yes. When we don't, he comes back and he says, okay, I have somebody to exercise. Yeah. When we, What is working out? Working out and exercise. Uh -huh. Same mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Working out, mm -hmm. exercise. Beautiful. Make it plain, woman of God. Yes. Beautiful. So when we fail to work out these things, when we fail to rebuke ourselves, when mm -hmm. we fail to examine ourselves, when we fail to allow iron to sharpen iron, meaning we have an accountability partner in the kingdom, somebody mm -hmm. who's going to tell us when we're off the rails. Right. When we fail to do all of that, God still says, I got you. Yeah. Because I have the men of God, I have the women Whoa, of God mm -hmm. who are fasting, they're praying, they're seeking me early in the morning, mm -hmm. and I have gifted them with the authority, okay, mm -hmm. over the devil in your life. Yeah. And he says, I gave some. Yes. So he gave us, he yep. gave Absolutely. it to you. Absolutely. Yep. You know, I, one time I was preaching, my wife can remember, I, I had Bishop Williams uh, in the congregation, in the church that I had. And, and I would, I ran and jumped up in his arms. Yeah. <laughs> see, he gave me to you. Yes. You understand? Yeah. Yes. And and, and 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 so we have to understand um, that I preached the message. My wife, we preached. I preached the message. They won't let us finish. Oh yeah, I love that. I love they that wanna, because Pastor Corey and Pastor Sierra are pastors. They won't let you finish mm -hmm. the work that God has placed yes. in you yeah. to finish in them because guess what, Pastor Corey? They don't come to church. They right. run. Or they left the church. Or right. they run. Like you said, honey, they oh, run. They Ambassador, run. They run. it gets worse. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do this this thing. Yes. Uh uh, I, I don't I don't want to lock up. I don't want to open up. We find little tinny little nothings mm. and, and hang that on the whole life of i'm not doing it i'm not coming i'm i'm just not and, and i i love my generation but then again we're scarred by all these excuses or all these uh infathomable things that don't matter we put it put that whole burden ahead of us that whole stumbling block ahead of us we put it there and right. and and build it and establish it we put this wall there and now we won't come back because of something we put there because of something so minute but we do more at the job we don't like mm. we do more in the relationship yeah. that we yeah. know we can't stand but yeah. we're we're no in need. it <laughs> don't need it and, and and we do more for them kids that don't appreciate us mm -hmm. i mean it, we do more for other uh, uh 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 outside sources that don't do us any good mm -hmm. but when it comes to the church like you said oh my god the people just they they don't want to come back and and that one one message that you found one fault in but all the other ones it was good yeah, you shouted every other sunday That's but that right. one message you right. one message 
you found fault and caused you to cancel the whole entire thing altogether. And I, I preached a message uh, some years ago. They, um, uh, this is what I'm working with. Yeah. We need leaders, shepherds, pastors mm -hmm. to actually seek God yeah. to find out what you're working with right. within your uh, different departments of your church, mm -hmm. in your administration, um, your members, so that you can do what needs to be done to right. address their breakthroughs. Right. You understand? Right. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper in your being soul. Good health, even yep. as your soul. Yep. See, my soul prospers. My, if my soul is prospering, everything else will prosper. Correct. But I need the guidance, as my wife said. I need someone to tap into who I am. Right. I need you to seek God, Pastor. You know, what I need to do, how I need to do it, when do I need to do it, who do I need to who do I need to disassociate myself with? Yeah. You know, what listen, I've told i the Lord ministered to me to tell some people, leave that job. God has another job mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. It's over here. Mm -hmm. And they're making hundreds of thousands of dollars. You Amen. understand? Amen. Because as a shepherd, you're able to see within the people, as my wife said, as a prophet, as an evangelist, as a teacher, you get that counsel from the people that God sent to you right. to be able to minister to you. Yeah, I know some people are in churches right now, and they're not getting that. Mm -hmm. You understand? Right. It, it's in a superficial church or church that's just playing a lot of music. You're dancing a little bit. I'm on a shepherd that's going to tap into my life, who's going to see here. God for yes. me early in the morning, yes. who's going to tell me that here's what the Lord told me to tell you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, and 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 I, you know, I did it when I was pastoring. I had to seek God. I had to labor for God. Yeah. You understand? So that God could minister to me. To to to, you know, we didn't have a large church uh, in um, in Maryland. I mean, not a huge church. We, yeah. had, we had a large church, but not a huge church. Yes, sir. But that church made it because we had faithful people yeah. who obeyed the scriptures. And who applied the word of God. Yeah. That's how the church made it. Yeah. I mean, it was, the, the note was, I and my wife, because she don't like me telling my business, the note or the business, the, that note was high. But we made it every year without any problems. Yeah. Received, God bless me with a salary. But it's because we minister the word to the people, yeah. their lives change. Mm -hmm. But their lives could, could have not changed if they didn't have an ear to hear. Mm -hmm. And they had to follow. You have to follow yeah. elder. And, sure. and elder pastors need leadership just as well as sheep need leadership. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So you have to follow. You got to. I was telling my wife the other day, the, about two weeks ago, everybody's got to have somebody they listen to. Somebody. Everybody does. Everybody. Yeah. You know, so if you're going around saying, I ain't got to listen to that person, I don't listen to that person. If you ain't got nobody to listen to and you don't listen to Jesus and, you, and, and you're listening to yourself. Fool. Oh. Yes. And you know what I wanted to say, um, honey? I don't want us to put all of the burden on the poor pastor. Mm -hmm. Because that's what we see mm -hmm. happening and going on. Mm -hmm. You know, Proverbs 27 and 17 tells mm -hmm. us that iron sharpens, sharpens iron. iron. Yes. 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 So a man can sharpen the countenance of his friend. There's another version that says mm -hmm. friends sharpen the minds of each other. Yes. And so in the body of Christ, we've got to get back to brotherly love. Yes. We've got to get back to being a brother and a sister to one another so that we can hold each other accountable yeah. so that the poor pastor can focus on these things. Mm -hmm. You know, getting this revelation out. That comes from fellowship. Dealing with the, the spiritual I'm, I'm, world. I'm going to have the fellowship with them. Indeed. No, I don't want to do that, honey. And you're asking too much now. Well, that's... Uh, you mean I got to go and hang out with the brothers in the Lord and the sisters in the Lord? Now you now you minister my burden. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. And, I, and you know what? I, maybe I shouldn't put it on the air, but maybe this is the only way I can get it out there. The, the people, especially the men of God, uh, uh, do not want to come together. They don't. I don't understand. We we can if I call a meeting, if I came on here tonight and got on Facebook Live and said everybody meet me at Wing House on Saturday at twelve noon. You know how many people would be there? Mm -hmm. uh, but if I say meet me at the church at ten thirty, oh, I, I didn't get that text, Pastor. <laughs> but it, but it say read. You got an iPhone too. It say it, you read it. You read it. It got checks next to it. You liked it. Yeah. <laughs> you forwarded it. There used to be the buddy, you know, you had the buddy system. You know, somebody yes. could, you can reach you know, out to that one. To. Yeah. But, well, let, let, let me show y'all this right now. Uh, let me see who. Uh, Siri. Hey, Siri. I love you. I think you're pretty great, too. <laughs> Here's their buddy system. Yeah. Oh, man. Here's their device. Yeah. Exactly. The device. Yeah. 
You understand? Yeah. So their fellowship or their assembly is uh, they're assimilating to this now. Yeah. And not with each other, like my wife said. She's made up a dynamite point, you know. It's not just the pastor's fault. You have a choice, as we read, she yeah. read earlier. You have a choice. Yeah. And, and why aren't we getting any um, uh, questions? We need to get some questions here. I know. You guys, come on, y'all. They, I think they loving what they're hearing. It's so, <laughs> do not, listen, people of God, don't be intimidated. You can ask questions. You can ask questions. Uh, I say that because, you know, people are always asking me questions. Ask me now. Well, listen, I took notes on Sunday, so I'm going to ask a couple questions. I'm going to go back and forth between both. So if y'all don't want to get in there, I get in here, pastors. Uh, These are my overseers, so I don't mind while I got them. Amen. So, Pastor uh, Apostle, you said on Sunday, Satan attacks and comes after those who are committed. Explain that to the people of God. Satan Mm -hmm. comes Mm -hmm. and attacks those Mm -hmm. who are committed. I want you to explain that a little bit for us. Well, as soon as you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior... First, we got to understand the devil is not going to mess with nobody he mm-hmm. already has, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Why would he do that? He's not ignorant. He's not stupid. He has a PhD yes. in how to deal with folk. Yes. So what he does is says, hey, I already got them. We, we don't need to bother. But once you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior, and let me tell you, he telescopes what your life is getting ready to be through Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. Yes. And so he says, wait a minute. I, I, this person is going to be a powerful evangelist. Right. Yeah. They're going to reach and be, a, my, my wife said, a helper. Because, yes. you know, people think a helper ain't nothing. But a helper is a powerful person. Oh, right. Yes. A right. Pro- powerful individual. Come on now. So, so once the enemy yes, knows the that you uh, you just got saved. God's gonna call, has called you. God has a, a a calling upon your life. Yes, sir. He immediately sends out angels, dem- demonic forces, to attack you. Wait, yes. you're messing up my religion. <laughs> so when I got saved, it was supposed to get easier, was it? No, sir. Nah, that's not what they no, taught sir. me in them songs. No, sir. That's not what they taught me in them Bible study. I thought it was supposed to get easier, apostle. So when I when I was saved by the, the mighty power of the Holy Spirit, I thought I got a full ride to heaven. <laughs> what are you talking about? The enemies and devils. I, I don't understand this yeah, stuff, that's sir. That's the part we don't tell you, you know, until after you get saved. Y'all you didn't know. teach that in orientation. Well, you know. We want to we want to bring people in first, right? And let them develop that relationship with Christ. Well, you know, um, there is an easy mm-hmm. way. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You know, the writer says he will show us a more excellent way. Yes, oh, that's yes, good. Yes. That's good. So, but what happens is when we get saved, we don't leave that stuff behind. Yeah. So it makes it hard. It is a struggle mm-hmm. because now the flesh and the spirit are warring. Mm-hmm. There's this imbalance. Right. We're going back and forth. Right. We're tossed to and fro. Right. And that really is what's hard. When you surrender, and I'm speaking from experience. Yeah. I'm not speaking from something make believe, <laughs> something I don't know. Mm-hmm. I have been in that fight mm-hmm. with myself, mm-hmm. that fight with God. Mm-hmm. No, God, you're not going to use me. Right. Uh uh-uh. uh. Right. I'm saved. I'm going to look cute. I'm going to sit in church. Mm-hmm. I'm going to reap the blessings that you promised. I want the blessings of Abraham. Yep, yep. But this other stuff that you promised in the New Testament, Mm -hmm. uh, I ain't got no time for that, Jesus. (laughs) Your cross, what? You already died on the cross. I'm not going to pick up your cross. Wow, yeah, you're right. That's how they think. Yeah, and so that's where it gets difficult. Yeah. Yeah, I like the scripture that you read, 1 Corinthians 12 and 31. 1 Corinthians 12 and 31. But covet earnestly the best the gifts, best gifts. Yeah. and yet show I unto you a more excellent yes. way. Yeah. And so what the Bible is saying is, uh, since you have, now that you're born again, uh, allow me to come in and let me uh, bless you with a gift. Let me show you, let me, let me, call, let me, let me put something in you that will help build the kingdom of God. Yes, sir. Yes, now, sir. Now, if you allow me to do that. I will show you a more excellent, excellent way. way. Yeah. You understand? Yes, sir. So, beloved, I wish above all things you prosper, being in health, even as your soul prosper. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you got you to gotta rightly divide and put these things together. I want to tell you, that's where your peace comes in at. Yeah. A lot of, of uh, people are in an uproar because they don't really mm. know how this thing operates. Works. Right. Yes. How it works. right. They, they don't know how. You know, I'm at peace, uh, Pastor. I'm at peace because I know what the scripture says. Yes, sir. Uh, it says, but covet earnestly the best gifts mm-hmm. 
and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Way, yes, yeah, sir. Don't that, don't that even sound peaceful? <laughs> it, does. it does. But but because but but because you're trying, like my wife said, you're trying to do the I thing, your way, mm-hmm. your way. Mm-hmm. Then you will you will not find a more excellent, excellent way. way. You're finding your way. That's Come plain. On, That's plain yeah. right there. I'm yeah. telling you, you don't yeah. even you don't even need to to break that down <laughs> more than that right there. You hit it on the head, Apostle. Okay, so listen, y'all. I need, uh, I'm need. i calling you out because I know you're in here. All y'all note takers on Sunday, stop sitting on those notes and getting these questions because you got about uh, 10 to 15 minutes, okay? And uh, uh, we're going to ask these questions. But woman of God, in your message, pay attention on Sunday. You made a comment or a statement, rather, that said the one thing we don't pay attention to, it becomes the one place we get stuck in. Oh, Can absolutely. you elaborate on that for us in that message? Pay attention, yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. And this is a part of my notes that I didn't get to. Oh, look at God. The rich young ruler. <laughs> oh, yes. I love that story. That example from Matthew 9, 19 and 16, mm-hmm. where he's, he went to Jesus. He said, look, tell me what I can do to mm. reap eternal life. Yes, yes. Okay. And he, he, and Jesus gave him a list of things and he said, oh, I've been doing that since I was a kid. <laughs> That's true. I learned that in Sunday school. Wait, can you, one more time, one more time. Can you give it to us one more time? Do that one more time. Do that one more time. <laughs> See, I, I <laughs> Yes. I told you my wife got some of it in there. Oh, the yes. She's a whales. Said, yes. <laughs> Jesus. I got this. Yeah. I've been doing this since I was a kid, uh, yes, Sunday school, yes. vacation, Bible school. And this is what I love about Jesus. Right. He very simply comes back and he says, okay. And there is one thing that you lack. Mm-hmm. And he told him, go sell your possession, yep. give to the poor, yep. and you will have treasure in heaven yep. and follow me. Yep. Now look at what Jesus did. He gave him very explicit instructions. Let me tell you something for everybody who claims mm-hmm. and says, I don't know why. Right. <laughs> I don't know what this is. Right. Yes. Have a little talk with Jesus. Yeah. Because he told this man what to do, who to do it for, mm-hmm. what he was going to get in return. Then once Jesus gave him something, yeah. the answer, treasure in heaven, then he says, come follow me. Right. And, it, and what do we do? Just like this rich young ruler, yeah. he went away sad because he had much property, the yeah. Bible said. Yeah. There are things that we value, mm-hmm. that we treasure, that we hold on to, that we make bigger Mm -hmm. than God. Sometimes we make those things, we make those people, we make those relationships even bigger than what we ask God for. We ask God, deliver me. And when he does it, we have a qualm with how he's done it. I know, I know. Oh, the process kills him sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like what you said in that verse because it says it in uh, Matthew, I believe it's uh, Mark. Mark uh, 10, mm-hmm. I, like, I love what Jesus said. And, and Jesus said, this is what he says, and Jesus beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, one thing, one thing thou lackest. Mm-hmm. Now, you do understand that Jesus said, one thing thou lackest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You understand that Jesus agreed with him. Yes, about state. those other things. The other things, yes. He agreed, yes, absolutely. He agreed with him. He didn't say, no, you didn't. He, he agreed, said, oh, okay, yeah, you're right. You're right, boy, you got me there. You got right, me there. right. One thing that thou likest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasures in heaven, and come take up thy cross. Listen, Jesus knows what your weakness yes. is. He does. Now, now, Sir Corey, you asked me some questions earlier, mm-hmm. and my wife can contest to this. I, I, I mean, I used to do this when I was pastoring years ago. I won't go into details on how. But Jesus knows your weakest. He knows where you're weak at. Yeah. He knows where you think you're strong at. Mm -hmm. And he will test you Mm -hmm. just when you say, I'm strong at this. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And he will send the enemy to where you think you are strong at this. But guess what? Only the meek 
shall inherit the earth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> listen, oh y'all God. working it. Y'all working it. Oh work, you yes. working it. Um, so. uh, listen, so, okay, I'm, before I move on, I want to make sure I'm giving people enough opportunity because I'll ask all the questions. I, I'm trying not to. I'm, I'm just looking for them to ask questions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's enough of them in here. Uh, so listen, people of God, if, even if you didn't hear the words on Sunday, shame on you, but if you didn't get them on Sunday, uh, you can ask questions based on what you're hearing tonight. It don't have to be directly from Sunday. It may be something you heard tonight. So please it, ask those it questions. It all is going to end up in the study. It's, oh, that's yeah. it. Exactly. That's exactly what's going to end up. Call your cousins and your friends and your aunts and tell them, ask that question you've been wanting to ask. Here are the people who can answer that question. Okay. Right, right. So, okay, while I'm giving them some time, I'm going to ask another one. So I'm just bouncing back. So Apostle... Uh, from the message, I'm not finished. Put me back in. You uh, you brought us to uh, took us to Second Timothy four mm-hmm. seven through eight. I'm gonna read that for the people, and I'm gonna ask you the question that that you made a statement to. Second um, Timothy, guys, put this in the comments if you will, please. Second uh, Timothy four seven through eight or seven and eight, but seven through eight. Second Timothy four seven and eight, and it says, mm-hmm. "I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course." I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, Mm, 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 which mm. the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at the day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Now, you kind of was hitting on this already, but we could just go more into it. So you said this. um, He was only able to make this statement or make this comment because he had a plan. Mm-hmm. Can you go into that a little bit more for the people? Exactly. And so what, what I was saying on Sunday is, you know, um, every, God gives all of us a vision. Yes. Uh, and if you don't have a vision, get a pastor that can give you a vision. Okay. No, I'm yeah. just saying, you yeah. know, if you don't have a vision, you know, you can't seek God or you, you, you can't comprehend a vision. Yeah. Go to prophets because prophets have the ability to, to see what God needs to see. Yeah. You know, seek see, see God for you. Yeah. So, uh, yes. In your pastor. Yes, go in your, to pastor. your pastor. Yes, because mm-hmm. go to your pastor. Your pastor has that insight. That's from right. God Good. To tell because you. they're your shepherd. Yeah. You know, right. So go yeah. and 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 uh, every last one of us have something that we should be doing. Mm-hmm. You know, all, a lot of us mm-hmm. do what people want us to do, or what we've been asked to do. But you need to seek God to what God wants you to do, whether it be in the physical. Mm-hmm. Or the spiritual. Yeah. You see, because if God wants you to work for a certain company, that becomes spiritual. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Because see, once you, connect. watch this, once you connect mm-hmm. with the church mm-hmm. and start paying tithes and offering, it becomes spiritual. Yes. You understand? Yes. So, um, Paul says, I fought a good fight. I fin-. Paul had a plan. He knew he had a plan. Yes. You understand? Yes. Look, Jesus, I told y'all Sunday, Jesus had a plan. Mm-hmm. Jesus came on the scene. He did what he had to do for Wait, three Wait, but how did he come on the scene, Apostle? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you got to do it too. One more time. How did he come on the scene, Apostle? Jesus came on the scene with a gangster. I love it. I love I it. I mean, he came on and John the Baptist, which was already foretold. Yes, sir. He went to him and, and John said that, man, I, I can't do this. You mm-hmm. know, your, the, the laces of your shoes, I, I can't loose, you know. And Jesus told him, listen, because John had a plan. He had a he had a course. He had something that he had to do. Right. All of us. So Jesus was baptized in, in about three years. Jesus did a work. He built and started the New Testament church. Yes, sir. Somebody said, "Thank you, Thank Jesus." You. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know. And so uh, then he listen. After that, he says, "I'm gonna leave y'all a comforter." Yes. Thank because you, God. y'all too have a plan as well. Yeah. I need you all to teach the people, mm-hmm. minister to people. Mm-hmm. I need you to bring forth this New Testament yes. church. This is good, you sir. see. So uh, all of us have a plan. You know. And um, so Paul says, "I fought a good fight." Listen, I, we didn't tell you the plan was gonna be easy uh. but you do have a plan you have a fight you have a you messing up my religion well i'm just telling you <laughs> you know and so we all have this plan god has given us a vision i want to thank the lord for all even the people in my life people like pastor Corey, my wife yes, his wife we there is a plan yes sir and and and, and all us connect oh I, did i say connect yes you connect. did we connect to make a better life 
for all of us, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for all of us. What's that scripture? I can't think of it right now. But we, we, that's what we do. We connect. We, we, we do what we do to make a better life for all of us. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. You understand? Yes, sir. So it, you, you got to find out what your plan is. Mm-hmm. You got to seek the Lord or talk to your pastor, find out what your plan for. Now, I want to tell you the first plan that people have is get in a church. You got to have that plan. Yeah. Gotta, gotta, and and while you're making plan. that plan, 2806 North 22nd Street, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Altar Worship Center. We are open on Sunday mornings at 1030. We're here on Facebook Live. Uh, we're also on YouTube. You can search us by that name, Altar Worship Center. So please, uh, the information is below. You can be a blessing to the ministry. If you can't come, you can give to Cash App, Altar Worship Center, or PayPal.me forward slash Altar Worship Center. That is in the link of this description of this video. Just go ahead and click it, and it'll send you right there. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for that I appreciate it. Amen. <laughs> we have to listen. We have to support our churches, our ministries, you know. And I do want to get a shout out to DL Wells Ministries. Amen. Where my wife is the the shepherd or the pastor. Yes. And so you, she'll be coming forth as of January the first. Our ministry doors will be open. Our internet church will be open. Amen. And I'm excited about it. And she's going to allow me to have one show one night where I can do a Bible study. Come on and here. I'm excited about that. And um, I'm just, thank you, honey. <laughs> hey Amen. We are, we are working this thing out. One thing that this year has taught us is to, to be more expansive. Yes, uh, yes, Apostle sir. preaches this word yes, mega, sir. and we got to get mega yes. inside our minds. Yes. Uh, not just the buildings, for say, but in our minds, mm-hmm. we have to think on a more mm-hmm. uh, expansive mega level. Right. So I love it, and that's what we've been trying to and achieve mega here. Mega can't be achieved unless we do it together. That's Correct. Right. It Correct. Cannot, it Correct. Cannot be done. That, that, that takes me to my next question, and I see we have a couple questions in here, so I'm going to ask this one last, and then we're going to go to the comments, and I'm done for tonight. This is my last one, so I got to even two and two. So, Pastor Wells, on Sunday morning, or afternoon, rather, you took us to Zechariah 8 and 12, and I don't even know if half the people in this live stream know how to find Zechariah. <laughs> <laughs> the woman of God, she uh, preached that Old Testament, and she it's in the Old Testament. That's your clue, all right? <laughs> Zechariah 8 and 12. I love it. It says, For the seed shall be prosperous, the vine shall give her fruit, and the ground shall give her increase, and the heavens shall give their due. And I will cause the remnant, remnant of this people to process, uh, possess all these things. This is Zechariah. Uh, 8 and 12. If you could put that in the comment section of people of God. So, Pastor Wells, you mentioned that some of our frustration is because we don't even know what to do with our seed. Yes. Can you elaborate on that for us? And then I'll, and then this is my last question, and then we're going to go to the comment questions. Absolutely. So this particular passage was talking about the seed of peace. Mm-hmm. Um, we, were, we started in Genesis, so I have to catch some folks up who yeah. didn't catch us on Sunday night. Yeah. Um, God, when he created the heaven and the earth, yes. and he created Adam and Eve, he told them that every fruit or every tree uh, with seed-bearing fruit would be theirs for meat, right. Mm-hmm. Right. for food. Mm-hmm. Now, the key is the seed, because without the seed, we have no food. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. So... Uh, You know, and if we fast forward to the New Testament, the Bible tells us that God will give seed to the sower. Yes, yes. So we we have this seed and we don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. You know, God gave us the seed not to consume it. He gave us the seed to sow it. Now, your seed can take many forms. Yes. Your seed can take, you know, the form of the word of God. It could be your resources that God has given you. It could be gifts and talents that God has given to you. You have to know what to do with that seed. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about the frustration. The frustration comes when when we are not fulfilling the purpose, the requirement, and the plan of God, mm-hmm. that's when we get frustrated. Because remember, our flesh and our spirit wars. Yes, that's yes. A, that's that frustration. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because your spirit man is saying, "Come on, we got this seed." God has a plan for us in this seed. We need to sow this seed. We need to use this seed. But our flesh is saying, "I want to eat the fruit, mm-hmm. and I want to discard the seed." Mm-hmm. That's what you said on Sunday. That's good. That's right. I like that verse too. It says, the 12th verse says, for the seed shall be prosperous. Yes. What more do you need? Yes. What more do you need? It says, for the seed shall be prosperous. The vine shall have her fruit Mm -hmm. and the ground shall give her increase. Yes. And the heavens shall give their 
do. Yes. And I will cause the remnant of this people to possess mm-hmm. all. I'm sorry, some. Yeah. Some. All. Some. All. all. A few things. All. It says all things. Yes, and it sir. shall come to pass in the 13 that as ye were a cursed among. Ooh, ooh. Go ahead. <laughs> Tear it up, sir. Go ahead. Come on. Ooh, ooh. If you were cursed. If you were. If you were yes. cursed. There's some of you that are thinking that you are cursed now, My you're, God. You, but you're not. Mm. You just think you're cursed because of what people said to you, wow. what the names that they gave you, wow. what they, oh, you know, they, they thought about your past. Your and own they, negative thinking, self-talk. Yes, yes. And your own, like my wife said, your own negative talk. But the Bible says they, that, that as you were a curse among the heathen, O house of Judah, O house of Israel, mm-hmm. so will I save, save you. Come on. You. Yes. And you should be a Come blessing. A blessing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not, listen, fear not. Do not fear. Yes. But let your hands be strong. Be strong. I love on. it. Come on, people. I love it. Come on, people. I love it. That's great, Apostle. Now y'all know Zechariah <laughs> <laughs> and Jeremiah. Yes, yes. You can find that in the Old Testament. The woman of God took us there. I love it when they be pulling out the ones that they don't normally go to. Everybody right. used to John and Mark. And, you know, but she went to Zechariah. Amen. All right, so I do see a couple uh, comments here. And in, in Pastor Wells, I believe you commented on one already, but we can elaborate on it a little bit. Uh, Sister Trina says, when you write your plan... Uh, when you write your plan, should you pray and meditate on it to see if God approves? And I know you wrote a comment in here, but you can elaborate verbally for the people that's on. Yeah, I mean, with it's with prayer that you get insight. Mm-hmm. You know, the Bible says that many are the plans of a man, but they're not always purpose for God's yeah. use. Yeah. So we have to seek him for the plan. Yeah. Um, and he, we can seek him. There are some things that he said, if we delight ourselves in him, he would give us the desires of our heart. Yes. So that's twofold. One, God can speak to us either directly. Yeah. He can speak through us through our pastors, like the man of God was saying earlier. The men and women of God can give you vision. Mm-hmm. I mean, tap into things you never even thought of right. because the Bible says that your eyes haven't seen it. It's not entered into your heart. You can't even yeah. imagine yeah. the things that God has in store. So there are some purposes mm-hmm. that lie dormant mm-hmm. in our spiritual DNA that mm-hmm. God put in us in the beginning, but they've not been tapped into because they need a spiritual activation. Yeah. Paul says that I long to see you so that I may impart some spiritual gift. So uh, I'm just trying to help us uh, know and understand that these plans can come from different directions because God is a multifunctional God. Come on here. Now, the other thing is we can have some desires and there's some things that we want to do uh, for ourselves, for our family, for kingdom. Yes, we absolutely need to take those things before the Lord because some of those plans, the Bible said, will result in destruction. Mm -hmm. And because it looks good for food, like Eve said, Mm -hmm. doesn't mean that God wants us to partake. Right, right. Yeah, because some of those plans can put us in the wrong environment. They can connect us with the wrong people. They could expose us to the wrong things. So we have to put those plans before the Lord to not necessarily seeking confirmation for what is feels good or what we might think is good to our flesh, but seeking his direction, seeking his anointing upon it and seeking his prosperity. Cause we want the seed of peace. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. But but I wanted to say this uh, because she broke it down, but I I just wanted to say this here. Your desires may not be your plan. Oh mm. yes, I love it. We have to separate the two. That, you know, why some, you keep messing with my religion tonight? <laughs> why? I was living this good life. I, I, I just want people to <laughs> understand. Delight yourself in the Lord. I give yeah. the desires of your heart, but your desires may not be a part of your plan. Absolutely. I want to tell you. Good, the Bible says, Been "Seek there, ye first in the kingdom of God, and all, all these things, and all these, and all these yeah. other things." Should be so, some of the things that the, the plan of God or the plan that God gives you is to build the kingdom. Absolutely, mm. Mm. absolutely. You understand? Now, now, don't take this wrong. God can bless me financially, right. that I may be a blessing to the poor. Right. Mm-hmm. You understand? Right. Right. And so, um, but but when you're thinking about you know these personal things that you yes. want, you know right. these personal desires, you know that's not a part of the plan. Right. You know, your 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 Bentley that you want, that, that's not a part of the plan. 
Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's just a desire that you want. Yeah. You know? right. uh, yeah. But a part of the plan is a bust to get people to church. <laughs> yeah. Come on. You understand? Yeah. Yes, sir. So, so, so we can't. In a, in a, in, in a bus driver. <laughs> yes. Okay. See, that we wants got to the, be a bus driver. Yeah, yeah. And somebody that don't mind taking the people of God <laughs> to the house of God and back home safely and, and not grudgingly, but a cheerful, uh, pastor, peaceful person. This, that sounds personal, Pastor. Uh, let me, sounds let me, like a, a ministry yeah. need. Uh, let me, let me, Commercial break. Let, let me, let me go ahead and slide back out of here so you can, go ahead, sir. I'm out. Go ahead. But, but that's what I want you to understand that some of your desires are not a part of your plan. Yeah. You know, you have to seek God for this plan, this vision. Yes, sir. And again, it's going to uh, excel. Uh, listen, and the reason why it's going to excel is because it's going to build God's kingdom. Right, you right. You understand? Right. And if you're not building God's kingdom, what's the purpose of the plan? Right, mm-hmm. right. You that's good. That's good. Uh, great. Thank you all. That means all of this, all of this is, is good. All right. So I have Sister Cherie. She says, what are... Uh, what are some of the ways we can tell when God approves of our plan? What are some of the ways that we can tell when God approves of our plan? I take uh, this plan uh, to God. How do I know and what signs or what? Well, we already talked about one of it. it okay. Does, does it benefit the kingdom? Yeah. Does it benefit the does kingdom? Benefit uh, the there kingdom? you go. That's one. That's one. Okay. Yeah. So. Oh, my goodness. I have so many because mm-hmm. I've been on the other side of this, right? <laughs> where I had desires and they had nothing to do with the kingdom. Okay. Not the plan. No. <laughs> not at all. Mm-mm. So a uh, common scripture that comes to mind immediately is Jeremiah 29 and 11. Mm-hmm. So God says, I know the plans that I have for you. Mm, yes. Plans for prosperity right. and not for disaster. Mm-hmm. So you know that your plan is from God or through God because it is a plan of prosperity and not disaster. That's good. That's good. Now we have we define prosperity in different ways. You know, uh, you have to study this on your own to understand what true prosperity is for you What's in your scripture? life. Yeah. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29 11. Yes, yes, yes. But the key here is not for disaster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love that. That's the key. I love that. Okay, if you will pay attention to the disaster, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you will know whether or not God is upon it because it will not be disastrous. The writer says that I am perplexed, I'm distressed, but I'm not counted out. Right. I'm not destroyed. Right. Hello. There are some things that don't always go the way we want them to go. Yeah. But they they don't destroy us. Okay. Uh, you That's said good. you said and, and what make what um study Bible is that? This is the New American Standard. It's the New American Standard. Yes. Now I'm gonna take you to the King James. Oh, King James. And, and, and you got I, I had to do this because I love when she does that because mm-hmm. I want you to see the two sides. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. So, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Back not, to that peace. That's right. And not of evil. Yes. To give you an expected, expected end. end. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, if, if, Cerise, if you want to know, um, God is not a God of evil. Mm-hmm. And your plans don't have nothing to do with evil. Yes. God has not embraced the plan with evil. Yes. He has not. Listen, he has not given you the plan to put you up, to bring you down. Come yeah. on. You understand? Yeah. So he says to give you an expected end. That expected end is prosperous. That expected end yes. is, is, is something that's going to build up the kingdom of God. Yes, sir. You understand? Yes, sir. But I, I do want to say this. That expected end, and I have to say this, is going to uh, illuminate within your family. Oh, I love within it. your family, yeah. you know, and and pastor within your church family. Yes, sir. Yes. Because all of that builds the kingdom of mm-hmm. God. You mm-hmm. understand? Yes, sir. But God has not given you nothing to bring evil or to to hinder, again, you from getting where you need to get to, or because everything you're going to do is going to build the kingdom of God. Right, right. All that is absolutely. Listen. People of God, all right, if you have not put your question in yet, you're missing out on a great opportunity to hear from the man and woman of God and just sound wisdom and and, um, understanding of the scriptures. Um, I got one more question here also by Sister Sharice, and we're going to go to that one. And then if you guys have anything else, please put it in there now. If not, after this question, we are going to uh, close out. 
um, the Bible study shortly, okay? So she says, is it true that uh, what we've gone through in our past is supposed to help others in our future? And are we supposed to profit off of it? Wait, in our future or their future? Uh, others in our future. In our future. So what we've gone through in our past, is it supposed to help others in our future? I guess the people that you'll encounter and sister Sharice, if you're on here, you maybe want to clarify it a little bit more. Um, I believe she's saying the people that we'll meet in our future. So what I've gone through in my past is going to, is it supposed to help? She's saying, is it true? Is it supposed to help others in my future? It make it, I guess, make it well, more. Her, well, it could be in her future yeah. or it could be in their future. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I'm I think she's saying that both are coming together. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, part B of it is, is are you supposed to profit off of it? Oof. That's another Bible study. But I, we, we, <laughs> we done had two tonight, pastors. I mean, my, wife, listen, my wife spoke about a seed. No yeah. one plants a seed yeah. without looking for a harvest. That's, That's true. You understand? Very true. So anytime you plant seeds into anything or anybody or mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. you, you're looking for a harvest. Yeah. You know, So you might plant a seed about, you know, from, from the knowledge that you have, it might change some, I've had it done many times. Right. I've, you know, I've ministered the gospel, taught people, given wisdom. Mm -hmm. It's changed people's lives mm -hmm. and they have blessed me tremendously. Yes. You understand? Yes. So, um, yes, it will bless you. You're not doing it for that reason. Mm -hmm. You understand? Uh, it, it's just that seed fell on good ground. Mm -hmm. I want to add to that too. And this is also very common to understand that. Yes, absolutely. Because how do you think movie directors make money? How do you think book writers make money and, and, and so on and so on? These stories are being told from often real places. So uh, you may not be thinking to make money off of it, but if you just put something down and pr uh, produce it, I know Apostle, shout out to Apostle, he's working on a production company. Um, if you just produce these real stories, these real events, yeah, they're going to help people in, in your future and you're most likely going to make something off of it yeah. uh, even if you're not doing it intentionally you probably will profit well, the bible said beloved i wish yeah above all things that you prosper, you prosper. in your soul and be in good health yeah. even as yes. your soul. there's yeah. a spiritual aspect to that that brings yeah. forth a natural aspect yeah. You yeah. Yeah. yeah she said yes the people that we encounter now so she did okay. yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah absolutely and profit is different for everyone mm -hmm. you know it's not necessarily Financial. financial it could be you know growth it could, spiritual growth it could mm -hmm. be natural growth mm -hmm. it could be you know uh wisdom yeah amen yeah. amen yeah. um and first corinthians 12 and 7 tells us by uh, that the the gift whereby the spirit manifests mm -hmm. is given for all of us to profit mm -hmm. the Bi mm -hmm. the bible says mm -hmm. um for all of us, the body of Christ, to profit. So, I, I, you know, I just wanted to add yes, and it's so important for us not to um, sh shun or discard right. the challenges that we've been through and we've gone through and that we've learned from mm -hmm. because God, when we go through things, God is equipping us yeah. for a future. Yeah. Equipping us not only for our future, but for the future of other people. That's what being a fisher of men is all about, yeah. a right. fisher of people. Yeah. And God has given us a voice to reach certain people. We, are, we all are accountable for a number of souls Absolutely. making it to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And so when we experience things, when we go through things, we can relate to those people. Yeah. Guess what? Our past is somebody else's future. future. Yes, yes, That's right. yes. And absolutely. we can help them get to that future or we can help them avoid that disaster. Right. Yeah. And Paul said, I've been, this is what Paul said, Paul said this, you know, that he, okay. say it Paul. again, say it again. Go ahead. No, say it. <laughs> <laughs> Paul said he became all things so that he might win some. All things yeah. to all people to, that he may win some. So we have you got to go through a you got to go through some things, right? Uh, and 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 again, those things that you go through are to uh, of a blessing for others. Some yeah. of the stuff you're going through, most of the stuff you're going, ninety five percent of the stuff is really for somebody else, right? right. God's right. using you as an instrument. Using you as an instrument, That's yes. right. a vessel. Right. So just go ahead, go through it, and then give that. The Bible says we overcome by, by the, the words yeah. of your testimony. Yeah. Oh my who, God. who overcomes? You tell me your story, Elder. Mm -hmm. I overcome. Yeah, yes. yeah. That's scripture. If your, if your story says you can make it, yeah, 
I can make it. Yeah. There is no shame in your story. Right. There's no shame in right. your story. Right. You, you have to tell your story because so that we can overcome by that story. There's no other way. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it works. That's just mm-hmm. twofold, uh, people of God. So, yes, yeah, Sister Cherise, you're just you're just confirming what you already know you're supposed to be doing, but we ain't going to get personal tonight. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um, Prophesy, Pastor. Yeah, hey, listen, <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. So, uh, people of God, all right, if you haven't put it in the comments, I don't know what to tell you, okay? So, we're going to give you an opportunity here uh, now to give. We want to give you that opportunity to give. We're going to just take a, a brief, a brief, small break so you can um, be able to give and sow into this word. Because, again, I want to go back to let you know, uh, Pastor Wells preached an awesome message on Sunday night and talked about that seed. And a lot of you are frustrated because you don't know what to do with your seed. That's what the woman of God told us. Yes. And I want to show you a way that you can plant this seed and not be frustrated anymore. So follow me as I follow Christ and plant your seed tonight because the Lord is so good to us. And we have because he gives to us and we give because Uh, We are able to do so. So this is the ways that you can give. You can see it on your screen now. We have Cash App available. If you have the Cash App um, on your device and you have a a way to give in that app, you can just type us in dollar sign Altar Worship Center. All one word, no dots, no special characters, just the words Altar Worship Center. Or you can hit paypal.me forward slash Altar Worship Center. You could type that in on your browser uh, right now. Or, you know, whenever you're able to get to your browser, you could type that in and it'll lead you to our PayPal account. You see the logo there. You know you're in the right place. Plant your seed, people of God, and put it into this word that has been so mighty tonight. Amen. So we're going to give you a few minutes to do so. Or not a few minutes, but just a couple seconds to do so. And we'll come right back to you in just a moment. people of God, uh, hopefully you were able to uh, reach deep into your pocketbooks, wallets, upper room, and there are other places that you have monies. <laughs> and so <laughs> and sow your seeds of faith uh, into uh, the, word, uh, the, the ministry of Altar Worship Center. Uh, again, can we just appreciate the man and woman of God tonight as they have sown their hearts and their words. We truly do appreciate you, Apostle and Pastor Wells, for blessing us with your presence in your words of knowledge, um, wisdom, and just the word of God in itself. Uh, I, I truly believe that the people were absolutely blessed. You guys do not understand how blessed you are uh, to have both of the Wellses in one night. I mean, you had them on Sunday together. You had them on uh, Tuesday night together. Y'all y'all were blessed. So if you didn't take this opportunity, I don't know how you're going to even go to sleep tonight knowing that you didn't take an opportunity to ask questions. But for those of you that did, were brave enough to step up to the plate and ask many questions. We do appreciate you as well. Uh, I'm going to yield this opportunity now to the man and woman of God to give some final remarks and then we'll close out in prayer. So uh, Pastor Wells, if you have any final remarks you want to live, lend to the people tonight? Absolutely. I just want you to remember it is so important for us to pay attention. We are in the perilous times, as the Bible said, you know, the last days. There's a lot going on that the Bible forewarned us of. But if we don't pay attention, we will be lulled to sleep by the enemy, seduced and destroyed. And we can't afford that. We can't afford that. God has given us a window of opportunity under this open heaven as the body of Christ to stand up and be recognized as the body that he has ordained us to be. So pay attention. 
Amen. 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 Thank you for that, Pastor Wells. And then we're going to uh, give this over to Apostle. And uh, Apostle, you can actually take us out with uh, a word of prayer, um, however the Lord leads you. Um, and then I'll, I'll digress until the end. Well, I want to, like my wife, I want to remind you of the message. I'm not finished. Put me back in. Mm -hmm. You may feel like you've been put out. You've been told to sit down not worth anything but while you were sitting there you were able to pay attention to the word that we've been ministering that we've been teaching you've been experiencing the fivefold ministry yes now is your time to get back into it's time get back to the church get back to AWC get back to your ministry yes. get back to the gifts that God has placed in your spirit yes. and here's what 2 Timothy 4 and 7 says I fought a good fight I finished my course I have kept the faith henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge should give me at the day and not me only but unto all them also that love his appearing yeah. listen your time is now get to one of our churches yes Listen, I, and I'm not saying that Holy Bible Christian Ministries organization is the only one teaching, but you, you need a one-on-one. -on -one. So come to our Merlin Church. Yes. Uh, um, Amazing, Amazing Faith, Faith Outreach Ministry. Yes. Bishop Keith Williams. Come to Baltimore, Elevation Ministries. Come to North Carolina, Masterpiece. Come to Tampa, yes. AWC. Or hit us up on DL Wells Ministry Facebook. We're going to be launching our ministry on the 1st of January. Listen, get somewhere where we can help you get back into the game. Get back into it. I, yeah. You know, I didn't want to say game because, you know, people are always saying something, you know. Yeah. So I want to say get back in. Yes, sir. You know, so that God can raise you up to be a glorious church. Yeah. Not yeah. having a spot, a wrinkle. Yeah. Your time is now. Yes. I don't care what they said. I don't care what they told you. I don't care what you've experienced. Come I don't on, care sir. what you've been. Your time is now. Yes. You can make the enemy out of a liar. You can do this. The prayers of the righteous of Philip much. That's what we're here for. Yeah. To pray with you. To believe God with you. And on a note concerning those demonic forces and those spirits, get to AWC. Get to learn about these things yeah. that are in Learn about these principalities. Learn about these things that are in high places. Learn about these darkness, the things of dark, the demons of yes, darkness. Lord. Come on. Yes. For you to be able to make it, you got to know what you're fighting against. That's why you need to hook up with AWC. Sir. Get to this broadcast. Get to that church. Listen to these broadcasters. Pastors, I'm coming back. Amen. I, the Lord. Amen. Listen, the Lord pastor. And, I, and, I, and my wife, the Lord is reaching out to someone in Tampa, Florida right now. Yeah. He's reaching out to someone right now. And he's saying to them, your breakthrough, your deliverance, getting back in is now. Yes, right now. You're not a mistake. You're God's choice, God's chosen. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this study. Thank you for what you have done, what you're about to do. Let us, oh God, place ourselves in the position of the individual who needs a helping hand. They need God to come in and change, move, cause some things to happen that have never been to happen before. We need you, Jesus. We understand that then through the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Today is my day of deliverance. Today is your day of deliverance. Your breakthrough, your chains are being broken right now. Said the Spirit of God. Your time is now. You're now paying attention. Now you've sat on the, the sidelines. You've paid attention. You've watched how your enemy has operated. Now it's time for you to get back in. Grab that ball. In Jesus' name, make a field goal. Yes. You can do this. You can. You can do this through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. We believe this in all prayer. 
We believe this because these three people have come together on one accord. And Pastor Sierra, we're on one accord believing yes. for yes. your breakthrough. Yes, God. Yes, God. In deliverance, it's done. Said the Spirit of the Lord. Yes, Lord. It's done. Yes, Lord. Thank Give you, us, Jesus. listen, send in your testimony. You, Type in your testimony that your deliverance is not. Yes. It has come in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Your deliverance is now. It's right now. Said the Spirit of the Lord. Yes, Lord. He's here. He's here. He's yes, here God. right now. Yes, God. Right now. Right now. He's here. If you touch your Thank iPad, you, if you touch your phone right Thank now, you. he's here beginning Thank to start you. your deliverance. Yes, God. Your breakthrough. Thank you, Lord. And no weapon formed against you from this day on, said the Lord. Yes, God. Shall prosper. Father. In Jesus' Thank name, Jesus name. we pray Thank together. Amen. 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 People of God, we believe with you. We love you. Thank you for uh, tuning in with us tonight. Um, God bless you all that have received and have benefited from the word of God tonight. Again, we thank God for our apostle and Pastor Wells, our overseers of HBCM. Um, shout out to Pastor Sierra, who's just on vocal rest tonight, but she all is well. Uh, and we uh, love you as well, Pastor Sierra, for uh, yes, giving yes. your support in this live stream and just being able um, to uplift your people. Uh, God knows you work, work this ministry as well. So we uh, do give honor where honor is due. And shout out to the entire organization of HBCM, all of you that we're in tonight and all of you that are looking for a church home. Find us. You know where to find us. The information has been given to you. Again, we will see you all on um, Sunday at uh, 1030 and we appreciate your time tonight. God bless you and we'll see you again.